All right. Uh, so I guess I can intro the puzzle first briefly. Um, the name is Probe Module. Chamber it's ships. a cabinet puzzle. And you both have to take apart this reagent and build these uh, products from it in these two cabinets. And you have a conduit that's has two holes in it. So that's kind of the mm -hmm. constraints of the puzzle. Um, the two metrics were cycles, which is, you know, your well-known how long it takes to drop the sixth product, or I guess the twelfth if you're counting both. Uh, yeah. And then also pig, which is a new metric we're trying out for the first time this week, um, which is the period. So if you have an arm and you have some instructions on the arm, uh, like this, for example, this would be three. So if you have two arms and one of them has to reset, yeah, for example, now it's this is period four. Uh, so you can kind of oh. see like that's the period of the solution. Uh, oh. His reflex. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you, you went silent on my end. I'm like, what? Oh yeah. And we've got some uh, interesting uh, notation for period as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Where the it's... letter is before the number. Right. So it's like um, we already have this notation for how many uh, outputs are made for every tape loop. Um, which is NP. So since we wanted to use the same letter, we decided to put the P on the front for period. So uh, it's like period, this would be P4. And like yeah. if you do NPM, that's your rate. Uh, uh, N over M. Was it N over M over N is rate. Right, right. So let's see. So P can actually stands for products per. Right, yeah. Which let's see, we'll do CAD spin first. Oh. Instructions what optimized with? instructions 20th. optimized, cost optimized, P35. cycles optimized, cycles optimized, first victory. <laughs> so this was a the first victory, then cycles optimized, then cycles optimized, then costs optimized, then instructions optimized, then instructions optimized. Looks instructions optimized to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this takes the approach of taking apart the input in the right chamber, in the same chamber as one of the outputs. And mm -hmm. that lets you not have to deconstruct the whole thing into pieces of two or, or less. Um, you can just take this three length segment and then duplicate it. In this case, there seems to be some chirality uh, things going on where it has to spin all the way around. But uh... already, I'm seeing some interesting chamber choices. Mm -hmm. And I really like the left chamber here, where it's just this very simple, uh, yeah. symmetrical way of getting the this product made. I bet that would work with three I. <laughs> Perhaps. As yeah, as, as, as someone who never once put anything other than a D bonder in the small chamber, I'm um, <laughs> I'm I'm keen to actually see the the small chamber used creatively for a change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So next up, we have Madmaster participation trophy. Low period for most of my it? arms. I've never done well in a tournament cabinet puzzle, and I'm not about to start now. So this one's interesting because most of the arms are actually on a lower period than 30. They're on period 5. Um, Which one's 30? Oh, they're low. <laughs> yeah, but 8 and 9, or I mean, uh, 8, 9, and 10 are uh, all uh, doing something right. slightly different. Uh so that's these, these three arms that's that are unfortunate. manipulating this fire output, the probe fuel, um, are what prevents this one from like being a, a period five solve. Yeah. But yeah, and this one, it shows the sort of other main layout that people tended to go with, uh, which is the input in the side chamber here on the left. I and... most definitely recognize that input disassembly <laughs> method. Right. <laughs> And there's various ways you can disassemble it in this chamber, but it kind of, I, I found, this is what my like test solve did, and I just fi found it very easy to think about this way, because you can think of it as, oh yeah, I'm taking it apart here and then putting it back together here. Um, mm -hmm. 
and yeah, there's this interesting conditional on the last one where it's atom by atom, but then on the last cycle, uh, it grabs this and has a two atom pair. <laughs> the left chamber, yeah. All right, so next up, uh, also at period 30, but with a slightly lower instructions, we have uh, Redstone Paradox. How much is this? Period. Oh, period 30. 30. Oh, it's also 30. Yeah, I didn't yeah. notice that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. the stream was still on the previous <laughs> <laughs> This one is also doing <laughs> calcification in the uh, chamber here. This looks like my first cycle, so... <laughs> Yeah, some of these are kind of similar. The, uh, I also have the P, like the um, outputs per tape loop showing on stream, I think. So you can compare. Yeah, this one is just breaking it down into twos, calcified pairs of two, which is a pretty uh, easy way to think of it, because then it's just, oh, I have three th things of two, and then I can manipulate them over here to do what I need to do with them. Um, oh, wait a minute. This is a cycle solve. <laughs> we'll look at this one again later. Roll. roll. <laughs> it's not the cycle. The cycle count isn't that low, so no spoilers. Okay, so this one's cool. This one's from Top of Mouse. Um, it's the first non one P solve we have. So this one only outputs uh oh. every two times around the tape loop. Hence the title, I believe. Oh, it says 0.5p, huh? <laughs> yeah. So this one does something interesting, which is that the Burlo is spinning around three times per tape loop. So the first yeah. time it gets fire, or actually, wait, what does it do the first time? First time, yeah, it gets fire. And then the second time it gets water in the exact same pattern. And then it moves on to this triplex bonder where it's doing conditional logic. So if it's not fire, then yeah, it passes it's... over it um, without getting pivoted there. But if it is fire, which you can see here, it bonds using the triplex, then it gets pivoted out of the way, so this doesn't grab, and then it moves here. So I think this is really cool. Nice. Um, this way of doing conditional logic that means you can make the exact same pattern just by moving the burlo around and uh, then yeah. bond the output and get it to the right place uh, using the triplex as a conditional. Okay, so yeah, 1p means that uh, every time it goes through the tape loop, it outputs one product. Uh, 0.5p means every time it goes through the tape loop, it outputs half a product. Uh, in this case, product is like the combination of both. both so, of them. Uh, the fact that it outputs one product on one tape loop and then the other product on the other tape loop makes this 1 half p because uh, it only outputs the set of both of them every Did two times. Did you add all of them customly or is it automatic? It's automatic. Um, it's automatic. Okay, I want to see what it does for me. Yeah, there there are a few where it doesn't know what to do, and uh, yeah, yours is one of them. <laughs> It'll just say question mark. <laughs> um, okay, next up we have oh no, that's cycles. Oh, I assume it's the same one that we use for AI. <laughs> So yeah, this one is by Vorgin, and this is, we're getting down 16, to P16. And another one where it's doing the deconstruction in the right chamber. This looks like a cycle solve. <laughs> yeah, it might be a cycle solve. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, <laughs> but if it's unclear, I'll do them in this part, I think. Yeah, just unclear, then you're getting shown in the first match, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and this one uh, decomposes it into two of these exactly the same things of three, and then turns one into the water output and one into the fire. One thing that I didn't really work that much with this kind of layout, the working with the burlo properly seems difficult, and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> this one this one makes it look pretty easy, but I think when you get down to lower periods, 
especially because this one it has to rotate two and then two, so that's like four instructions already. Uh, uh -huh. But yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, skip this one. Next up, we have Matter Monkey. Compromise hard. Compromise hard. <laughs> G12 already. This solution is bad, I think, but at least it's not my cycle solve. So this one is our first 1-6 uh, P solution. Oh. So it's 1-6 uh, P12. And you can see what it's doing here is arm 4 is rotating like one extra amount per trip through the tape loop. So there's a conditional where arm 4 is able to grab and move this off. Um, that happens every every six times through the tape loop. Oh wow! And this is another pattern that you're going to see appear later. Um, I love arm four. <laughs> yeah, arm four is the one that's driving it all. Because everything yeah, else is also is doing the, the same one that missed the period, but. Uh... <laughs> it looks interesting. I just love the aesthetic of arm eight. Mm hmm Oh yeah, it just grabs and then moves. <laughs> I'm like an arm three. That's a good way of getting the input salted and getting mm -hmm. yeah. the uh essences made. Mm -hmm. And because you always have one salt in the ring, no matter how many times you go around, by yeah, pulling just make it sure off. Yeah, those are water. Yeah, so like, yeah, it pulls it off, and it's boom. It's, it's, it's salty. Yeah, that's one of the products. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very convenient. <laughs> and yeah, the fact that it's six, and then the amount of times to go around before you grab it again is six, also pretty convenient. Okay, skipping that one. Skipping that one. Uh, <laughs> this one says period in the title, so I think it's a period solve. Uh, and period it's, and Hello, it's, Jasper. And it's one half P. <laughs> so oh, this one... There goes your must, top 15 <laughs> must be doing some, uh, some sort of conditional here, because it's one half P. I see. So it's like this logic can handle either this six ring or the half that gets left over here. So if it's a six ring, it debonds it, turns it into this two and then one. Uh, mm -hmm. Or if it's the ring, it just moves it, debonds it, turns it into the two and then one. And then how does this work half on this side? Uh, half P is interesting. Yeah. Okay, so this is doing something similar where it's spinning the uh, burlo by basically a net spin of three per tape loop, and then doing some kind of conditional to distinguish. How is it distinguishing this? Oh, arm 10. So arm 10 uh, is rotating three arm times. Arm 10 is, yeah. It doesn't like grab it half the time. Right, so if it's grabbing on this side, it becomes the triplex bonded output. If it's grabbing on uh, this side, it becomes the uh, electrolytic fluid. Arm 10 and 11 both do three rotates. Oh yeah, okay, 11 as well. I feel like we're gonna start getting primary ties at this metric, I would hope. Uh, indeed. <laughs> Up next is not great with a one third P. It's a lot of atoms going through per loop. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's rotating this sort of twice every time and putting through two single salts. And oh, it's building so both of the products at the same time. So one of the salts uh, from each tape loop goes to the top product. One of the salts goes to the bottom product. Um, uh -huh. The the conditional stuff at the top of the large chamber is very nice. Oh yeah, for the output? Right, because you have yeah. to know when it's going to be done 
a building, so. Yeah. There are two things that have come to hate by doing this puzzle. One of them's chirality. The other is calcification, which I didn't know I could hate. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can be hard <laughs> to find the right place to put those calcifiers. But this, I, I, I think this- the new glue I hated today. <laughs> <laughs> this like general way of debonding or, or deconstruction helps that because everything just ends up calcified naturally. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. So let's see. So, oh yeah, so next up, this one I'm going to show with the cycle solves. <laughs> Even though it's not... These solves a, really are similar. <laughs> the solves. You're uh, telling me there's a P9 cycle solve. <laughs> <laughs> PA already? <laughs> oh boy. Damn! Already yeah. down to P8. Yeah, so this is a drop to P8 from Tweedledee. Um, uh -huh. At half P. That's a very busy right chamber. Yeah, there's this is like some Molex Sintez stuff going on here with all these grabbers. Oh yeah, it does yeah. look like Molex Sintez. <laughs> Only arm 11 is on the edge. Why are you <laughs> so different? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Burlo, but Burlo doesn't count. You can't put that on the edge. Mm -hmm. Burlo gets a pass. So this is half P. What's the conditional here? Damn, there's like zero spare room for anything in the right chamber. There's zero spare room for like anything. <laughs> <laughs> 95 instructions. So let's see. Okay, one tape loop outputs one. One tape loop. So it's outputting so, one on one tape loop and then two on the next tape loop. And I guess that's the conditional, is whether it's it tells which tape loop it's on by when the output comes out. Right, because like this arm huh. seven is grabbing conditionally. I see. That's some wacky conditionals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like a lot of conditionals going on here simultaneously. It's also using an output conditional here. So it, it like, right, I think it is. Wait, is it? I, I don't know how this works. <laughs> it, Magic. <laughs> arm 16. I see. So arm sixteen is doing something very interesting here, where it's Which like arm sixteen. That one. Uh, this one, it grabs. It like does all the rest of the stuff for this. So it like moves it back uh -huh. so that arm thirteen doesn't grab it. Then it pivots it, makes the last bond, moves it back, pivots it back, drops the output. So there's a lot there's of just like conditionals based on whether something's there or not in this solve. Uh, yeah. Where something's either going to grab empty space or the atom, depending on whether it's in. Uh, time through the track loop one or time through the track loop two. Um. Also, shout out to anyone in chat who actually did play Moloch Sintes. Even though I did get <laughs> bored halfway through the campaign. I, you got yeah. halfway? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I said you got halfway? I got bored halfway. I'm like... Yeah, no, that was my gripe with it. But yeah. Kluge Solitaire oh, is the best part, yeah. Oh, but if you didn't <laughs> if you didn't solitaire. finish if you'd only got halfway through the campaign, that means you're missing like two sentences of lore. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. It's like half yeah, the story. Two sentences. <laughs> Yeah, the, the one grudge I have about that I that I will hold on to forever is that the Kluge Solitaire, if you beat the game without ever cheating, you still get the cheater achievement. <laughs> That's BS. I know. <laughs> well, um, what's the point? It's going to be really hard to do it without cheating. <laughs> anyway, uh, next up is Tulare with another period 8 um, down to 58i. 
Um, I tried desperately to make a period six machine, which oh, I think I still think is possible. I couldn't find a layout that didn't leave pieces stranded or lacking an element I needed. I'll leave that to the wizards. Period eight feels competent. I'm satisfied with this solution. Yeah. Twenty third. And yeah, this is a one six p. One six p. I like the duping station. Yeah. Except it kind of falls apart after that. So yeah, it's doing something... Let's see, where's the conditional here? Is it arm 4? Yeah, arm 4. So when it gets here, arm 4 grabs, pivots, and... It outputs that one easily. And the other one... Does it really... Oh, arm 4 is only rotating, I assume. Doesn't return. Yeah. So every 6 cycles, it grabs the fully tubed input and passes over to the debonding station where there is... No more conditionals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just kind of deals with the triplex in the left chamber. Yeah. <laughs> Which is nice, because, yeah, if it's just triplex, you got heaps of room for it. And you don't really have to, yeah, worry yeah, that much. People chose that. Yeah. Like, if you're doing uh, input stuff on the right chamber, you're going to put triplex in the left one, usually, mm -hmm. from what I've seen so <clears> far. Yeah. And from experience. And, and this one does have a period override <laughs> instruction too, so there's something. Let's actually let's, let's try removing it and see what breaks. Probably a lot because the everything's tuned. Oh wait, it makes this output. Oh, but this gets grabbed. Oh, re grabs. Yeah. Odd number periods right, are hard to work with. Kind of... Oh, uh, pipeline clogging, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I will say, looking at some of these solves, it feels like like input in large chamber gives you a bit more room than I initially expected. So I may have unfairly dismissed input in big chamber. Mm -hmm. I started with input in big chamber and uh, quickly noticed that, oh, this is better with input in small chamber. So it kind of went the other <clears throat> way around. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should have put it okay. back. Depends on maybe your I approach. Maybe I should have put it back. No wolves my, in space. Yeah, <laughs> so this is a solve. This is our first. My uh, cycle. Oh, sorry. Oh no, it's fine. Uh, period seven. We are here at period seven. We are at period With seven. Our, oh my god! Already. <laughs> uh, just making sure it got in. May have forgotten to include the secret code in my last submission. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is a one six p solve that's taking apart the input. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any arms that are like changing their rotation every time through the tape loop. The only conditional is the input suppression. So after it pulls off all six, then the input stops being suppressed and uh, the next one gets pulled. So it's making, it seems like a steady cadence of one salt every time through the tape loop. And then here there's, I guess... Conditionals. Oh no, arm five is changing its orientation every time through the tape loop. That's, I guess, the one thing that's happening. Can I just say, all of you are scary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is a brand new metric too, um, which makes it extra yeah. impressive that, like. I mean, I guess it's not that far fetched, but, uh. Yeah. People seem to have figured out these uh, conditional tricks. I mean, I guess the fact that conditional logic has I mean, been a thing for a while. I mean, instructions already exist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a lot of the same tricks, but... Uh, but yeah, I guess we should... a different optimization point. Right, right. And I guess we should start talking about, uh, as secondaries become important, just like... The main thing that affects the number of instructions is just the number of arms, so... You can do it with fewer arms. That's usually better for instructions in this. Secondaries better okay. start mattering. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also I'll say right now I'll be utterly amazed if there's a period three solve this week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Next up like we that, have that will, that will really <laughs> shock me. We have Rebex. The world if this was free space. <laughs> Rebex at twenty first. The, the the this is a very last minute solve. I think Rebix was uh, not I really see. planning on participating this week uh, necessarily. Yeah. But, uh, oh right, I see. 
we do appreciate the solve in any case. Uh -huh. But yeah, this is another 1 6 P solve. Uh, oh, I do like the arm um, 4 5 combination actually. That's really slick. Oh, yeah, it's able to grab, uh, use the same arm to pull from the input and. or pull from the conduit, or. Uh, and drop onto the conduit and make the. the skull on the output. I want some calcified and some not. Oh, just just the single air is not calcified because it's debonded first before it gets to touch the calcifier. Hmm. I see. But it's no problemo because it ends up getting calcified later anyway. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> depending no, on. it's good that it's not calcified because it turns into. <laughs> well, it, it does end up. There. No, it, it does Wait, make it doesn't a salt. Matter. Yeah, it makes a yeah. salt there. But yeah, lots of it's bit... interesting things here. Also, one it's half it's of the conduit weird, is over the burlo. Yeah, what? Sorry, um, because yeah, only one of the um air atoms don't appear to get calcified, but the air atom has a different journey depending on which one it's part of. Hmm. Like some air atoms get sent back to the um the water output, but then some get added to the fire output anyway. Yeah, arm seven is doing some interesting stuff where it, uh, like. Every other atom gets dropped back oh. into the conduit. Oh, I see oh. why. It's one of them gets returned into air, and that one has to just be recalcified later. I see. <laughs> All right. So it was not adding up. So I'm like, wait, wait. How are different things what happening? Everything's the air atom? Like going like, through the conduit. No, arm seven. There are different like... air atom. So uh, arm seven makes it every other atom that goes through. Arm 3 is just a waste of instructions. Arm 3? Rebic says collision. Let's see. Boom. That's the problem. That's why Arm uh, 3 needs to exist. Ugh. Yeah, the input's not staying. That always sucks. Uh -huh. At least for the first period. The pressure is ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, some very cool um, conditionals in the left chamber. Huh? All right, next up we have a pretty significant drop to 21i. Oh, wow. From Irrational Holy Guy. Holy shit. <laughs> this is an instruction <laughs> solve. <laughs> yeah, so removing the period overwrite from arm one gives a bad intermediary that I couldn't deal with because of the small space and period. Removing the weight from arm one gave an even worse one. I have no idea how to deal with them, but since I programmed this solution in the last two hours, I believe it may be possible with more time. It's uh, pretty good for a two-hour solve. There's a really low secondary, I must say. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah there's that only also means we're six most arms. Definitely got into period <laughs> six now. <laughs> this is the only. This is Damn. the entire instruction tape. No scrolling. And yeah, oh, this nice. this left chamber is identical to Katzman's, I believe. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> I thought no, that but was it's only cool got three instructions. Tech. Yeah. It's only got three instructions, though, and like Katzman's who had like six. Uh, right, because it's one six p. So it only has to move it over one at a time instead of going over all. Well, wait, I actually I don't remember what. Uh, it's Katzman's probably slow enough that you can just do that on Katzman's solve, anyways. Mm-hmm. Period six was barely good enough for top twenty. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but yeah, we've got arms three, five, three and five. Both are doing the thing where they rotate around every uh, time through the tape loop. And yeah, it's able to make yeah, this pattern. Yeah, arm three of... is the important conditional one. Arm five can just like not have to reset to save mm -hmm. an instruction. That it's makes just, sense. It just happens to be synced up to arm three's loop. Right, because if you're on uh, one six p, you and something's only happening every six time or every uh, six tape loops, you might as well just not have to reset. Yeah. And yeah, it splits it in half, passes one half here, sends the other half out there. Very clean solve. Yeah. This is, I feel like this is going to come up a lot on mm -hmm. lower periods. 
So yeah, Maybe. as as people uh, because, were... uh Yeah, yeah. The the like the arm three you mean? Uh arm one. Oh our, oh yeah yeah yeah. Well this we've seen this before with the piston even. Where, I, yeah, I, you... I think we'll still be we'll be seeing it more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so next up we have our first P6 solve from Ebonov. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ebonov. 62 yeah, instructions. There's the same that's, arm one, I except it's a piston except on a track. Okay. And yeah, the 16P. So there's a pretty long note here. I'm curious if this debonding in small chamber is the way only way to get 16T. Uh no. <laughs> if that's the case, no. and this is not the first few solves on stream, I guess we can skip to the next paragraph. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Trade off of chirality is fun. Uh, having Damn conditional notes. <laughs> um, uh, trade off of chirality is fun. Having water molecule cover the conduit would require P7 to avoid crashing into the first air. Taking the water molecule out of hex uh, arm earlier leaves no space to calcify the last water atom without calcifying other water atoms. One may ask if it's possible to make Burlow not duplicate onto the last water atom, but that's pretty much the same problem as weak 2TI without allowing bad sticks. This means that the P6 requires good chirality of water at the cost of bad chirality of fire. While the small chamber is P5, so many things in the large chamber are P6 and I can't imagine P5 being possible. <laughs> it definitely seems possible. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so one burpee for me. <laughs> Yeah, there was that one left chamber really early on that made me like, all right, we're definitely going down to five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm limited at 6p for another reason. It's probably coming up somewhat soon. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then this one... It's interesting how it calcifies some of them, like the first couple are not, and then... I guess that's pretty common. There was one other one that calcified everything but the first one. Um, Four would be amazing. So this is a one eye drop. Uh, oh, thank God. <laughs> to 42 Genius 42. Um, finally, a fairly decent solve. Could not get a period four or lower solve, so went for period six and eventually succeeded. Uh, 30th Could place? Not get a period of four. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's not 30th place this is number 18 uh not, not finally bad. something finally someone who has uh, reasonable expectations with this commit <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah this one is one half uh p it's making these two halves and doing a conditional that brings this half directly onto the output very cleanly uh it like pushes it over the burlo here to get the two waters. Oh. Why is this so fast? Yeah, yeah it's it's a one half P solve that manages to have pretty good cycles. This uh, th this oh. solves making me question my cycle solve, and we're not even <laughs> in the cycles, man. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna happen, not like this entire like results stream. Yeah, I... like you get you'll be questioning your other <laughs> metric or looking at. <laughs> Yeah, I can't one, not show this one because it's like half P and it's clearly a period solve, but it is maybe... Yeah, it's, it's definitely period six, bit, but... Uh, maybe like, some people are looking I'm at this cycle. It's 89. <laughs> yeah. cycle's 89. This is 89 cycles and it's half P. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and the cool. conditional logic here is not too bad because, yeah, it's only half P. It's just whether arm four grabs or not, and then over here... Um, arm 10 grabs the first time and then the other arms activate the second time through. Um, now we have another one eye drop. saying this beats their cycles. <laughs> Hexapig. Yeah, that's a... Oh no, yes. Yeah, these one half P uh, or one half P6 solves are quite low in cycles for, for Pig. Mm-hmm. How much is this? 86. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the note... <laughs> Why are they getting faster as well? Because <laughs> they're less arms, so less latency. <laughs> uh, as I was reasoning about this puzzle, I hypothesized that the main difference between cycles and period would be fractional P, so I started approaching the puzzle on TI-ish terms. 
In the end, those early fractional P ideas fizzled because they completely deconstructed the input. That meant they needed a bonder, and there just wasn't space. But this solve, lineage went a different direction and achieved fractional P by mistiming ARM activations in an otherwise mundane algorithm. No TI tech at all. This machine processes one product per loop, but alternates which product gets built. One half P if we consider a pair of outputs as one, or one P if we consider them separate. This is one half P on the parser. Yeah, because it's they're considered as a pair of output, or the pair of outputs is considered yeah. one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and the missed time grabs are just like referring to like what ARM five is doing here, or like ARM two is doing here, where it grabs when something's not there, so it does whatever it's doing doesn't actually happen. And uh, yeah, I like that debonding. Seems uh, convenient for another mm -hmm. metric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get it's like you get the three, two, and one. Um, you also can mostly calcify it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now it's we have... funny, I actually did, okay, sorry, I, I actually did come across that debonding method when I was optimizing the, um, when I was trying to optimize for pig, but because mine was in the small chamber, it meant that debonding it into half was a pain in the ass and I had to dismiss it, mm -hmm. but I never considered it for the main chamber where it looks like it's actually a good idea. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, <clears throat> it makes a lot of sense to do it in half because that's like it, the shape of this output, so... As long as yeah. you don't have well, to put it through yeah, a conduit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if you if you're debonding it in half in the small chamber, it's a pain in the ass because you need it in thirds or sixths mm -hmm. to get it through the conduit. But it's funny as to how context makes that debonding method look good or bad depending on like what chamber and like it, it completely changes the qualities of that debonding method. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have. Some more instruction drops. 54, what was the previous one? Oh, Goodbye Galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> so there's something interesting happening here. You notice the last title was Hexapig. This one's also called Hexapig. Um, <laughs> it's just the easiest name <laughs> to think of when you have six period. I bet there's going to be ones called Pentapig at five. Well, so uh, <laughs> I, there's something fishy going on here. So pay attention to Cycle Sol's Goodbye Galaxy and Fiesta. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something fishy going on. You'll you'll see what I mean. But anyways, yeah, the solve when cycle solves <laughs> comes up. Yeah, in the cycle. They have the same cycles name as well. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the the note here. I think it's conspiracy. A, a lot of the machinery breaks at five period. Even if I could get ARM nine down to five instructions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> indeed, the cycles name is also the same. Or similar. Uh, Just whatever other pick, I assume. Um, I hope it's not like also six on cycles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, this is a one six p solve again, um, but operating in the left chamber. Most cycles, it outputs something on the top, and then on the last one, it outputs two, and then on the one after that, it outputs nothing. Hexapig seems like a reasonable name to, like, name to name your solve, considering yeah, I'm a more, person called Pentapig. Mm -hmm. I'm more impressed by the other name, which they said in chat was Sputnik. Like, that makes a lot less sense. <laughs> I don't see how that naturally comes from the... I, I guess unless you're reading the law. Right, that's yeah, a probe. Probably, yeah, it's lore. <laughs> Lore related. Right. Yeah, both lore enjoyers. Glorious lore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of curious. I guess so. Yeah, arm six does like a pulls half of the things from the top. And then arm nine grabs it if arm six doesn't. And then at some point there's going to be two showing up here. What happens then? Oh, I see. Arm 12 takes it for the lower one. That's pretty cool. It just it sort of alternates um, top and bottom building. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm sure I'm glad that every single instruction shave I did counts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a one instruction drop. Give in and try six. Kevlar. Uh Six is, is the pile up. Good yeah, to know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, got very close on P4, just didn't have space to maneuver the electrolytic fluid with all the mechanisms I needed. P5 had similar issues since P5 is mostly just P4 with an extra pivot on some arms. I mostly stuck yeah. with this layout because the fire side is really compact in the main chamber and you don't need a monitor for the water side. <clears throat> right, yeah, because you get this. Evelyn put it very like clearly what P5 is is just arm movements plus maybe a pivot or track loops. Right. Or if you have a multi arm, maybe. Or hex arms. Yeah. Yeah, hex arms too. Or like any multi arm, yeah. That Berlo do be wiggling though. <laughs> yeah. Berlo do be wiggling though. But yeah, I guess it's like three and then two and then one. And yeah, this is a one fourth P. Oh, interesting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I didn't even notice that. Huh. <laughs> yeah, let's see. So first mm. P, arm one grabs here. And debonds. Second P, arm one grabs again, debonds. Third P, arm one doesn't grab anything, and arm six grabs it. Fourth P, arm one doesn't grab anything, and arm seven grabs it away. So yeah, there's the four things that happen with the input. Oh. So yeah, it's like first tape loop, debond, second tape loop, get this thing and wiggle it around. Put it here. Third tape loop, get this salt and this thing. And then, yeah, fourth tape loop is move them off. Uh, next up is Bambi with another small instruction drop. A little bit higher, four that's, instructions. Yeah, that's a bit more. Uh, bring your own bacon. Add one six. <laughs> 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 So this one uses this hey, we have track loop. Normal off track loop. Yeah. Yeah. Instructions. Uh, this is instructions after all. There are instruction secondaries after all. <laughs> yeah. This I don't is know, nice. It's I'm like, that's not a lot at all. I I, I just like it because it's like oh hey look instructions tech I actually considered yay. <laughs> <laughs> It takes up so much space, though, and space is such a important resource in this puzzle. <laughs> it's interesting, too, because this uh, suppression of the input is actually necessary to make it 1 6 instead of 1 5th. I wonder if there's going to be 1 7th T. Or even yeah, 1 4th. 1 7th would be weird. I'm 1 7th is because one... of input. 1 7th would be because of input suppression that it can't come out because it was suppressed for an extra loop. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, like, there's just an empty, uh, like, if arm six was there, uh, if, like, the product from arm six was blocking the input for longer, that could be. Yes, the bottom EQ in the large chamber costs area, that's true. The true cabinet area <laughs> optimizers among us. <laughs> oh, no, the communist mountain <laughs> <believe> shambles. <laughs> Okay, so this one is a tie in primary secondary and Holy shit. 10G off the tertiary. This is the playtest solve. 10G oh. off the tertiary. I can't believe it. Oh, it's a... I bet it's a Kelsey <laughs> It's non-scoring. Yeah, non-scoring <laughs> from Haxton. Uh, damn, it's non-scoring. <laughs> so yeah, coming is first impression. I like, damn, I can't believe I have top 10 chance. <laughs> first impression, P is kind of a mix between cycles, like small periods, and instructions, like fractional products for tape loop. Yeah. And yeah, this is a 1 6 P solve. <clears throat> Debonding one at a time. Morikanda is saying she's worried there's going to be a skipped solution around here. <laughs> Panic. There is a skipped solution, don't tell us. <laughs> Well, it kind of has to because it'll turn up on the overlay. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I think we're Well, I mean, it won't show up, but you'll notice that a number disappears. <laughs> <so. laughs> Go 
God, I hope not. <laughs> All right. Um, well, um, next up, we have another. Oh wait, no. If the person has just better, an even better pick solve, then it won't show up. So right, yeah, right, don't right. tell us if we skip something. Okay. Uh, uh, where's the G save? Um, let's see. Previous one was for what? Um, it's probably for eighty ten. Yeah. Probably a track. It's kind of hard uh, to know. This one, there's a lot of stuff arms. going on. Yeah, well, let's yeah, we can, arms. count arms. 11. What's the other one? This one has 10 arms. 10. Oh, there you yeah. go. So clearly, it. clearly, it's, it's one got arm. It's a whole and lot more pistons, though. Not any of the other complicated stuff. More piston, but less track. Yeah, it's only got two track. Wow, okay. Okay, so next we have another 20G save. Oh, <laughs> top 10 chance. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Keep them ties coming. So this one's from Kazian. Coming. Coming. <laughs> uh, I think I understand. Overclocked timing crystals in the installer medium would twinkle like artificial stars. The faster the overclocking, the, better, the brighter. The crystal keeps tempo for a transmutation engine, and the engine creates fuel to power the crystal. Very well. Here is part of your constellation. A dim star, but a star nonetheless. Alchemist Kazian. You still not a brick. Oh, There's actually really good showing from Kazian this week. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm interesting really happy to say it. How it builds the triangle and then oh, adds the triplex to it. I was wondering how uh it's doing triplex, even though it already fully wanted the shape in like for the fire pipeline. Yeah. It does it on a really different part and then bonds the extra bond. Oh, that's clever. That is a sick conditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great job, Kazian. <laughs> also, how many is that? Uh, arm one, two. Oh, those have six cycles. But six period six, the debonding sequence. Because I've been finding, oh, trying to find a five debonding sequence that sends one atom at a time, mm -hmm. consistently. Yeah, I'm with. Yeah, this feels conceptually close to a a P five. Mm -hmm. Um, other than the left chamber and arm um, 12, I'm trying to think of a way to get arm um, 12 that's not P6. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, like yeah. The geometry, it would be hard. It's oh, probably okay. the space constraints that doesn't make this P5. It, it feels close, though. It does feel close. <sighs> Oh, apparently Kazian got it down to uh, P5 after deadline. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, they were Or, yeah, or were wait, not, maybe not even after deadline. Not, never got around to submitting it? Oh. Huh. Well, yeah, I, it's hard for me to show showcases submitted after the deadline just because I download everything as a zip, but uh, feel free yeah. to, to post a GIF in the Discord. Yeah, just post a GIF in there. We'll, we can check it out there. I nearly forgot to submit my cycle solve, so I do actually <laughs> sympathize with forgetting to submit. Yeah. Where right. does this turn into, like, which arms are limited? Arm 1 and arm 12, I think. Yeah. Are limited at, yeah. I like the it does that, though, yeah. If you submitted the P5 solve, there was a good chance of a top 10 finish. That, yeah. is, that is unfortunate. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious if P6 goes to top 10, though. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I'm looking at the instruction count. I, I won't rule it out yet. It could still happen. Well, next Especially up... Especially if we're dropping at the speed. Yeah, yeah, we have a four instruction drop. Oh, there it is. To our first... Uh... <laughs> I have so much extra space, I looked so hard for the five. <laughs> yeah, this five. is quite, quite sparse, yeah. So yeah, this is the first question mark P solution, and uh, uh, you'll see why. You'll see why. <laughs> question mark. Because <laughs> the way that it calculates P is it calculates the rate, and then... Uh... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the rate sort of just turns to zero. <laughs> it has a rate. No, it's infinite. Yeah, infinite rate. Yeah, infinite. Oh, hey, it's the spinny burlo. That looks it's... familiar. 
So yeah, this, this is <laughs> using a... That, that thing, <laughs> that parallel, limits me to six instructions, and I have found several ways to try to not make it do that, but I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, it's because of um, four that it has to spin every cycle. <laughs> Well, well, it has to do it because it's conditional, like... right? So, like, the Burlo doesn't start until, like, all the way out here. So what it does is yeah. it first makes uh If I want it to these. be less than, like, six, oh, yeah, right. I have to have two bonding stations and two uh, duping it? stations. Because then, like, I can dupe from another position that would give me uh, fi uh, that where fire is only two rotations away. So I can rotate two here, rotate two back. That's only four instructions. Which would fit it in the five loop, but like when I ever tried to do that, it does not fit everything else. Mm -hmm. Because like I could like insert uh, an extra dupe at the top left corner, about there, but and like have a piston move back and forth to. Oh wait, that. this isn't um. If it wasn't for you're not telling me if it wasn't for the bell, or you could have gotten P five. It, if it wasn't for the Burlo, I basically could have gotten P five. Uh, everything that's at everything that's at P six is uh, there for instruction saves because I. Oh get yeah. Oh, if my period was limited by a freaking Burlo <laughs> wheel, I think my head would explode. A left chamber is possible to make into a P five uh, yeah, chamber. Use, but, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, use two arms instead of one. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got plenty of... Look at the amount of space in this solution. Just look at it. <laughs> it's asking for a P5. Just didn't oh, get it. <laughs> okay, so Bist, fun fact. Yeah. This solution is almost identical to a previous solve I had for Pig. The difference uh, being that I... I started with, with fuel first because I thought it'd be funny if you only got six fuel. <laughs> and then eight and ten are in different places, but pivot eight. the same thing. I and then slight could. numbering differences in arms. But like it's holy smokes. <laughs> this looks way <laughs> this looks familiar. It is. I did consider doing fire first, because maybe it would be easier because like the the water output is easier to make, so maybe doing fire first will like leave room for more easier conditionals to like make it not like it's the two atoms, like, sometimes two atoms come out, come out of a conduit, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. This makes me, let me just looking at this solve makes me think the water first is the way to go, but maybe I'm missing something. Oh, so y'all also have, like, different, <laughs> doing different things in different order, like... Oh, I mean, I don't have a pig solve, but... Yeah. Oh, you don't have a pixel. I was like, damn, Zorflak is performing really well. What happened? <laughs> no, 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 I was one of the skipped ones from earlier. Uh, okay. No, yeah, no. I um, I mentioned in the like the Discord like an hour before the deadline that uh, I don't have a pig Damn. Oh well. I like set aside Friday and Saturday. There's like mm. I'm gonna crunch out pig and then and then damn, the pigs brain got hands. <laughs> and then the, the the brain chemicals didn't flow so yeah yeah that was unfortunate mm. oh well well tough place yep uh so okay. now we have another four eye drop um oh is this mr plus <laughs> no it's cuckoo 52 <laughs> with a whole new uh uh different method one fifth p ah one fifth huh. p huh. <laughs> and i guess it's because it's debonding Three individual oh, atoms. I school conditional. It's because the arm one misses what's left of the input, which lets arm four just grab, swing it across. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's very nice. It like. I mean, I do that for mine too, except it's not in the main chamber. <laughs> right. But like this, the fact that it's able to swing this group of three across the entire chamber <laughs> like this with nothing in the Yeah, like that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it does it earlier than mine does. But, yeah. chamber. <laughs> How close is this to being a uh, P6? Uh, 
not P not P five. P five. It looks like the arms are six and oh, three. No, they're fairly limited. Yeah. On a lot yeah, of them. it doesn't look. It does not look very close to P five. Yeah. Oh well. Arm three is extremely limiting. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way to do arm three in a P five way that I can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess we have the return of the Cadspin Chamber here. Cadspin Chamber. Cadspin Chamber. <laughs> We're still naming so much stuff after Cadspin now. <laughs> I saw it called Cad's Chamber earlier. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cute. Hmm. All right. Oh, too bad Cadspin is here. She probably fell asleep. Mm. Yeah, I think she said she was getting uh, some rest. But yeah, next up we have in top 10 um, a new submitter. Holy, okay. New submitter. Ooh. Mr. McGuffer. At a one third P. Damn. And uh, yeah, the note is actually a two cycle improvement. I think I can get this down to period five. I'm sure some geniuses can get four. I'm going to make the bold claim that three is impossible since you can't release the atom after pivoting it on the triplex. Makes that, a whole lot of sense. That's the only reason <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this Burlo positioning is extremely cool, uh, where it does all the fire in this like weird corner back alley uh, duplication here. Yeah, big ass swing. And yeah, it's got the big You're swing. Getting the duplicated to work in the corner like that is like a thing that saves a lot of space, but is also a pain in the ass. So making it work is like a cool thing to be able to pull off mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't completely hamstring your machine. Yeah, and the way it does the <clears throat> three different things is also interesting, where it debonds these two and then one using the exact same stuff. And then it just doesn't grab the last time, so this three goes over there. So you get the really nice uh, two, one, three decomposition, which gives you the shape of this and then the minimum number of bonds that you need to make to make this output. Also, I will say a cad spin chamber looks like it would have saved a lot of instructions. Oh, yeah. What yeah. Yeah. And th it this is like the down. pattern that it works with, right? Yeah, yeah, this, that is the pattern. I'm pretty sure you can take it down to 31 instruction mm -hmm. at P6. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Would it matter, though? Or is everybody else just P5 now? Um, yes, indeed. It doesn't matter. Oh, no, it's just no, P5 it, now. It, yeah, yes, indeed, it's P5. <laughs> with, uh... It did not matter. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so here's our first P5, P5. for top 10. Right. Or... That is an interesting debond sequence. Okay, that's a thing that exists. <laughs> one tenth. <laughs> yeah, P. this is sure. one tenth P. Because yeah, this this two atom pair sort of takes a little trip uh, before it can get to the up the uh, conduit here. <laughs> <laughs> that is a cool trip. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell I do not know. <laughs> God oh damn, my God, man. it's the Steven piston. Oh, that's true. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Arm four is a Steven piston, <laughs> and all the pistons are pivoting at some point. I guess that's kind of do you expected with the P five solve that you have a lot of pivots, but yeah, I, yeah, I think pivots kind of become important because it is a thing that moves the atom in a way that doesn't make your arm have to reset later. Mm -hmm. Also, this does uh, triplex conditionals, so. The most impressive part about this is the left chamber, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely the most visually interesting. Well deserved a uh, top ten with a uh, period five. Yeah, the conditional stuff going on here is very perplexing. <laughs> There's no real conditional. There's not really much conditionals in the main chamber, but the way it passes things through the conduits means that it just happens to line up with the burlo. Yeah, but like arm 10 only grabs the uh, electrolytic fluid because this gets pivoted out of the way. Because uh, if it, that's just triplex logic, it isn't like, too complex. Well, it, it, it's not though. Well, it's, it is kind of like the thing is that this ends up in that space anyway. Like it, it's shape logic more than triplex logic. Uh, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Because there's an extra bond being sure. made here for some reason. Mm hmm. 
I guess just because so of the timing I, that these come out. Sorry. Um, I was just going to say this. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at this left chamber a lot. And one thing that's kind of important for these low period solves that debonds in the left chamber is that you don't want too many atoms going through too quickly. And what I mean by that is you take yeah, one six P over one third P. Mm -hmm. Because one third P means you're sending both, um, you, you're sending both atoms through a conduit, which means atoms are coming through that conduit like twice as fast, which gives your right chamber a lot less time to process them. Mm -hmm. See, so yeah, and because you have less time to process them, you don't have as much room to do cool conditional tricks like we, what we've been seeing a lot in the right chamber. Mm -hmm. So that's an important consideration for these P5 and maybe if we see it P4 solves that debonds on the left chamber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And this one has a very slick way of doing that with this clock. Just like ticks a few <laughs> times and then... <laughs> yeah, I, I believe this is the only one tenth P uh, solution that we have. <laughs> I would be surprised if there were more. <laughs> um, but yeah, next up. Cycles, this is, cycles 1, copy, copy. Is, the fact that it's called Cycles tomorrow, kind of. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, let's watch the cycle count. <laughs> 82. Half P. Yeah, half P, 82. Um... So, iterated from my first solve, as shown by the title, arms 6 and 7 are kind of neat. Instruction count can probably go quite a bit lower if you do less than 1 half P starting from an instruction solve and working up, instead of starting from a cycle solve and working down. However, I will eat a cow if period 4 is possible. Oh, damn. Cowie. <laughs> oh, that's a knowing, bold knowing cow Knowing you, you might have to eat a cow. <laughs> that's me. He was super proud of his solve, and he has not shown up. <laughs> I have no real idea how good this solve is, as cabinet period is not exactly what you'd call a standard metric. This will beat all the cycle solves at least, so I'm guessing it'll place around 10th. 8th. The, the chapter could guess. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, I did think it would be interesting to have like a tournament mechanic where you try to guess your placement and you like get like some amount of points for that or something, but I, I don't yeah, know, maybe, maybe yeah. next year. Gambler side pot competition. <laughs> yeah. Line. Yeah, I I don't want it to affect the actual points. Maybe just like an extra <laughs> point system, where it's like, how accurate are you at guessing your position? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm just hearing another excuse for me to be making bets. So <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm all for the, I'm all for this idea. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, next up, we have Newchar. Newchar, nice. Point five. Period five. Um, oh, points. Oh, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Output conditionals, nice. Oh yeah, nice. So yeah, this is doing like a. This is the second. Output there it is. There's the single atom per. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh yeah, this left <laughs> chamber here, yeah. <clears throat> this track yeah, that... It is. That's what I wanted been. to make. But yeah, this this seems like a very clean P5. Uh, it is. It's what I wish I could have done. Good conditional. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that the outputs have the same number of atoms means that the output conditional is like very viable. And the fact that this yeah. is uh, one six p means that you could only have to spin the burlo once, and you get a full rotation, um, mm -hmm. which gives you access to both sides if you're doing it uh, alternating the outputs. Grimmy asks in chat if we're doing O pig showcase after the pig metric. Uh, is are, did multiple people submit O pig, or is it just just uh, just you? I, I guess I could load it up. I got a I got a old pig as well. Oh, okay, cool. I think it's better if you just leave it to the end, since it's 
Yeah, I mean, it would be significantly different. less, uh, it'd be easier just procedurally to leave it to the end. Yeah. All right. But yeah, this uh, this makes P5 look easy to me. So it does. Very, very... It just, it's clean <laughs> and it makes sense. Just the left chamber. The left chamber is really the most important part. Right, right. it's what makes everything possible. Being able to get those just one atom per uh, tape loop. One atom per tape loop at uh, a consistent with a consistent stream, so that you can get six to me. That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up, we have a four eye drop. It's Pentapig right. Lamau. It's Pentapig Lamau. <laughs> and it's, yeah, Mr. Puzzle Soul. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we appear to have another output conditional. Oh, oh no. Pain. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Pain. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that 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 pain is like it's, <laughs> Yeah, it's basically you take best solve and you clean up the left chamber a bit. No, you clean up the burlo. <laughs> yep. The burlo is the most important part. I could have cleaned up the left chamber as well. Yeah. Well, well, I think the burlo is compatible with your solve as is. It is. So that it would make it, I bet I could make, make a five fifth. I bet I could make a P five solve like now if I went and edited it. <laughs> it would probably take you five minutes. <laughs> it probably. Oh no. <laughs> I did not consider the first one being wrong. Right. Like... I, I think Starfish actually mentioned that in chat too that you could have it spin three times. Uh... Not just, not even three times, one time. Yeah. Yeah, just like this, Party just do it once and... That's the reason this is less instructions than this. <laughs> yeah, and, and because if you take advantage of the way... Because uh, arm six and arm five rotate at an offset, and you take advantage of that offset because fire and water are at opposite ends of the burlo wheel, so they're adjacent to salt, which means they proc twice instead of once, which is also important tech that was handy in week two. Mm-hmm. Right, because you made exact, well, yeah, these exact uh, combinations of things for week two. Yeah, this came up a lot in TI. Yeah. I guess I was... Yeah, it's making the essence there. of heat and cold. Also, I'm going to make a comment <laughs> real quick, because I have no idea what the top five are going to look like and how many P4 solves we have, so I'm just going to say real quick... Um, with P4, um, because I, cause I, classic Zorflex, I shot straight for the moon and failed. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I only ever considered P4, and with my left chamber... Sorry, I think your mic is muted or something. Oh, did we do the Zorflex? Oh, no. <laughs> His phone might have died. They wanted time to go. Oh, guess... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Rest in peace. I'm gonna be really is... looking oh, forward to that. You were gone for a bit, sir. <laughs> yeah, your ah, your whole speech is <laughs> out. I ran. Um. Oh. Oh. All right. <laughs> yep. I will. I will mention that I banged my head against the wall for such a long time to get period four to work. And uh -huh. it's the smaller chamber I had trouble with. I needed, uh. I like, I got cha I got the right chamber to work just fine at four. It's the left one. I needed to output like, similar to how it's working here. Yeah. And I just couldn't get it to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only one I found was a one fifth P idea. That was the only one I found. Mm. And like I was desperately looking for one that wasn't one fifth P because it would just have been so much less of a pain in the ass. And that's what I'm thinking Biggie shot the moon with, uh, uh, like when he was talking about spending a million years trying to do really well. That's what I'm imagining he was trying to do. Trying to, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing if he found a left debonding chamber that solved that problem. Mm hmm. All right. Well, so I just want to say that because I don't know if we're about to see P5 solve, P4 solves or not. 
Yeah, well, I'm still amazed how close this is to mine. The only difference on the left chamber or on the right chamber is one burlo, of course, <laughs> and two is the position of arm nine and eleven. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a very strong motif. It does the exact same thing since they're both pivot arms. So <laughs> <laughs> should have been pistons. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have and it is the Tetra Pig. It's the holy shit. Top five. It's period four. All right. Oh damn it! Yep, that left chamber would make my um, Tetra uh, shoot. Um, oh. that left chamber makes me feel like an idiot. <laughs> that left chamber would <sighs> arm one. Arm one's the MVP here. That's mm -hmm. actually a very unintuitive arm, even oh. though it looks simple. Oh, it's like it does priming. The same no. thing as, it does the same parallel. Oh my arm. god, I was so yeah. close to oh, as <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, this is like the same like... layout. This is the arm. same layout, except it's a P4 assembly on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, arm one is like priming the pump here, getting this uh, whole conditional oh, process started. Oh, I guess started uh, the atoms so good. Could cut the save instructions by removing arm six and seven and just putting a. Yeah, I feel like yeah, this could save it very... by just removing arm six and seven and putting the conduit there. Uh huh. Yes, yeah, so this is the pay for debonding chamber of my dreams, but yeah, yep. it does make me feel a yep. bit stupid. But arm four is a lot more unintuitive than you would think. Um, actually, when I was in this kind of uh, exploring this solution space, because it's kind of inside the chamber a bit, and that conditional is a lot, it's, it's quite clever. Mm -hmm. I'm not too mad I missed it, actually. <clears throat> but yeah, this pattern for the I'm fuel sure is, is, is cool too. So close. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Which yeah, excellent. I'm like, too arm, away one, and I... <laughs> arm one is so good because the problem I kept yeah. running into is I pull the two atom piece off, but then the pivoter pivots the molecule into the wall. But one fixes that by just not being there. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Right, and the way arm two and the way arm two brings the whole thing down before arm three pivots, so it, not, it collides with neither the wall nor the input, which is respawned, is very tight and very cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, hi Biggie, this is our uh, the P4 section of the stream now. Oh, Biggie is here. Five <laughs> people are P4. Yeah, Congrats, pretty Biggie. crazy. I, I thought you had like something impressive. Yeah. But yeah, in so... fact, arm one is going to be my first candidate for pivot of the week. Mm. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Well, until we see the cycles, anyway. But... Yeah, or, 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 and the top four solves. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, two of us are lamenting that this is so similar to our solves. Oh, like, it's... the right chamber is almost identical. <laughs> <laughs> yep. How many instructions would we save if we remove arm six and seven? Uh, no, not seven, whatever the arm that is. Arms. Under uh, seven and uh, that's uh, eight that arm is seven and eight. So the eight, forty-six yeah. instructions. You need, it, oh it no, it doesn't. Crash. It's not fast enough. Yeah, it, it actually isn't. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, well. Can't you just can't wrong. you shift all of the timing in the right chamber forward by one? Uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna mess with Me? it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the problem would be five it's would drop four already. Five would drop an atom back into the left chamber and you'd have to oh, get yeah. it to not do that somehow. Mm -hmm. oh, you got yeah. space well, in the top I mean that's, for a that's two instructions, so you're still saving some. Mm -hmm. Quick, right. do more tinkering live. Crap <laughs> <laughs> <Brad> drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, we so... should tinkering with a top five solve is probably a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we got a one eye drop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing over the fact of the name. It's also potential. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, I didn't even think of that when I was coming up with the the metric name, but uh, it is kind of, I guess, obvious in retrospect. See, now I'm really now. Now I'm just sad that Pentapig solve isn't 
one ten page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He could have just like self titled the He could have just self titled the solution and it would have been dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like if that were the only five I like everyone else had six I and then it was Pentapig at five I. <laughs> but yeah. Funny. So yeah, this one is uh one fourth P. Mm -hmm. It's Unbonding two here, and then it makes this four and swings it off. Maraconda referring to Pentapig as a D bonding main. <laughs> D bonding. <laughs> but yeah, and it, this is main chamber uh, deconstruction, which lets it do this. I did not even consider main chamber deconstruction. Mm hmm. It yeah, it's so just... much sense, but I guess if you can get a... Uh... The geometry's really slick. The way that arm six mm -hmm. rotate here kind of works out. It, it, it kind of ties everything together perfectly in terms of geometry, because you can get arm five right there, putting that spare salt in the same conduit hex as the main hex arm is, and then you got the other three just kind of chill on there and you can output it really easily because it's the water one mm -hmm. and then you just have to work out a period for triplex and you got heaps of room to do that and so you can just throw heaps of arms at the problem right and that arm eight pivot is also very very good in fact you can just pivot the output like that like there's, there's like a, he's used all his space in the main chamber perfectly here mm -hmm. it's really nice actually it's like arm two's right where it needs to be, arm three's right where it needs to be, arm six is there perfectly, arm seven and eight are just barely got enough room to do their thing. Yeah. Arm That's five's it. right where it needs to be. And these two uh, calcifiers are doing a lot of work. And this one too. Mm. Just, just three calcifiers total. Oh my god, the spiritual, sh the spiritual shampoo has not shown up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> So it's between Biggie, Calioresis, and Spiritual Shampoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Those two are performing very... <laughs> all three of these three are performing very well. I'm curious about their cycles. Mm -hmm. They so, have kept their position during production week. So was it 54i? Pentapig is at 53i. Now at 52i, we have Biggie Mac 42 bacon. with fully cooked bacon. No. Another oh God, main chamber impact. deconstruction. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, same, similar thing to what Pentapig is. 9 is it? Not 9 uh, Yeah, it's, it's yeah, one, nine, one, nine, one, nine one p nine. yeah. That's, why, that's some... why didn't you keep it fractions on that? <laughs> <laughs> that's some, that's some crispy input. Uh, I, I implemented the P thing like half an hour before the stream, so I didn't really have that much time to... You could, like, it's probably this exact same thing as the... Oh, because you don't have the... Could have asked me for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah, so there's a also, note did... on this. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, um, before the stream, I predicted that this would be the week Biggie enters his sicko phase, because he always does at some point in the tournament, sooner or later, and I was predicting this would be the week, and so far it looks like I'm right. Mm -hmm. So far, yeah. Except... uh. It seems that Spiritual Shampoo and Calioresis are also uh, keeping yeah. up with their previous performances, so maybe well, placement like, won't change that much compared to those two. Well, it's a, it's a maiden victory for either Calioresis or Spiritual Top 2. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, let, let me read this note. Uh, I tried for way too long in a period for eating up the better part of four days. I first tried to disassemble in the left, which I got working at 1 8th P and 1 11th P, but then the other chamber never seemed close to working. Uh, then I moved mm. to this layout, um, in which the right chamber did everything, um, disassembled the burrow and output the water. At first I could pass two air and one fire through the conduit, but that left far too much work for the left. Then I reworked it and found the version seen here, which allows, uh, 19P. Next two days were a major roadblock. On Friday, I spent a couple hours on period five, um, and eventually succeeded. I built the showcase, I, so yeah, he made a showcase solve with an overlap, um, similar to the week one 
nine two six showcase. Uh, and yeah, and DMs. That would make it- <laughs> I, I think Biggie was thinking of for the longest time period for being like a 926, which is like something that uh, people would put a lot of time into, but not end up finding. But uh, then, we'll yeah, on, on a long drive on Saturday, I thought about how I could use the motif that worked at period five at period four, it required two synchronized arms passing the molecule back and forth between output and triplex. I had my laptop. I worked backwards from that in the hotel for another hour, and I finally got it. I have beaten the pig. Here is my fully cooked bacon. He beat Pentapig, so yeah. <laughs> Two by like how many instructions? Two? One. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Barely beaten the pig. Also also in chat, which push tragically confirmed Oh that this I, yeah. idea would have worked and uh-huh. it would have gotten which push to forty eight instructions. Wow. Oh. Forty eight. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. I wanted to take a look at, at uh, which pushes solution afterwards and see okay. if I can get my okay. board to work and see how good it would be. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh. I am the queen go? of having tweaks that would probably be first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this is like the missed win main. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, next up at number two. Spiritual Shampoo at 46i. 46. Okay, maybe I wouldn't have been first. Oh. Uh, and yeah, it's a one third P4. Oh. Oh, oh. With its very cool bi arm. Oh, that here. disassembly's really good. Oh. Oh, oh my god. That's oh. clever. It just works. <laughs> and this cycles count isn't too bad, <laughs> to be honest. For a to be honest. Wow. <laughs> For being what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if he, if he just like submitted this for both metrics, he would have gotten decent. I'm <laughs> guessing he would have gotten decent points on both metrics just for one solve. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and the uh, comment is literally better than Pentapig. <laughs> how, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's just mentioning that it's period four, but uh, coincidence is better than the actual Pentapig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Also, shout out to the TI by arm in the left chamber. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was mentioning that. that that's an amazing by arm. Yeah, it's definitely doing the TI and thing. Track where loop it, tech. Yeah, it pulls this. Oh yeah, oh, twelve yeah. and thirteen are doing track loop stuff. Oh, there's so much good stuff here. It's like different length track, move, pivot, uh, grab, uh, grab, pivot, release, move. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's four instructions, all right. But yeah, spiritual shampoo and chat saying left chamber is probably improvable. So there's a lot of things going on. Improvable, yeah, it does. But Their it definitely right looks chamber cool. is amazing, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, because because to to think about debonding while also getting the right duplication is like a scary thing to try and work out. And, that, and that's why this works, because you have to consider duplication and debonding at the same time, and just hope that you can get them to synchronize without colliding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there's three whole arms here that are just doing pivots, arm four, six, and seven. I mean, pivots are strong, especially in this puzzle. Right, but it's like only three instructions, and then arm five is also only doing three instructions, so like, from an instruction secondary perspective. Uh... Yeah. A lot of arms are only doing like the minimal amount. Wait, did the Discord overlay go away? Uh, no, the overlay's still there. Yeah, I still see it. Okay. This, what, what's the Discord overlay? It, 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 it's been away the whole stream and it just came back. Oh. Maybe it, like, never loaded properly or something. Wait. Huh? It, huh? It's been working what for me. Discord? Oh, the one on the right. Oh. Yeah, no, it's been it's been gone all stream. It just appeared oh, for the first okay. time. <laughs> well, that's all our problems, oh, okay. So. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the. Huh. Yeah, I thought the it was ranking like, list. Uh, rank, yeah, that's, I was like, that, that was there. That has nothing to do with this. That would have been a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, what? if you didn't know who we are, well, <laughs> you can check this video. Out. <laughs> uh. So yeah, now we have a 
16 eye drop. Whoa! <laughs> what? Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, oh. See, Okay, the, the, excuse me? <laughs> Just wait for what, it, what, wait for what? it. Ex excuse me? <laughs> oh, one arm kicks three. in way late. Ar arm three. Yeah, arm three, so it picks the, the first half off pretty quickly, and then it has to wait for arm three to go around, <laughs> like, a few times to spin it into position to get the second half. And yeah, so this is like a very low instructions way of splitting it into two parts and putting them both over this output. Uh, because you'll notice uh, this is another question mark P. Uh, Burlo, delayed Burlo solve. So, well, because the Burlo kicks in late, so then you're only making water from this point on. Yeah, so see how it starts at fire here? But it doesn't make six first, does it? I think it yeah, does. Yeah, I think it did. No, it should. Yeah, you can, you can speed first? up the simulation. Yeah. Oh, okay. It did make six first. Okay. <laughs> so that was the winning constant. That I got that. Actually, <laughs> uh, Genius 42 mentions arm nine. Do you actually. Uh, it's pivoting, it's pivoting here. It's pivoting here. Actually, may, uh, you, yeah. Actually, maybe you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, actually, yeah, you, you can't do the cat spin chamber, actually. Yeah, P4, I think you need reason. it. You might. Yeah. You might be able to do it if you rotated the conduit counter, or if you rotated it counterclockwise twice on the one, and then I'm not certain though. Mm -hmm. You might not have room for outputting well. You might need an arm nine anyway. Yeah, or it might be like a chirality thing. But then I guess you could just spin it the yeah, other way. Yeah, I think it's chirality actually. Yeah, it might be because of. Uh, is it possible to like just mirror the? No, you can't. Yeah, it's probably a chirality thing. Doesn't matter. Oh, this sorry. is first place. Wait, isn't <laughs> so. there uh, something that you can mirror? This is first place, and it does, it, if, it's if not you, going on the you, leaderboard. If you because... unhighlight the output, you can mirror everything. Oh, I see. Yeah, just press uh, E. I see. Well, I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh... <clears throat> but yeah, this is very cool. Thirty also, instructions. Yeah, people. Um, uh, people were calling for arm three to get pivot of the week, and it's absolutely it's... between that and which push. That's it's that there's an incredibly clutch pivot. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 the whole solve relies on that one pivot. Because mm -hmm. yeah, this too so bad. Arm... This isn't gonna be on the leaderboard though, <clears throat> because we had a twenty something I at a lower at a higher period. Oh yeah. But yeah, and this arm two is able to get the output in the right place where arm three can grab this here and rotate it back and make the same shape. And yeah, it's just so funny wow. to watch it, like, seemingly making no progress as Arm 3 makes its way uh, around. <laughs> yeah, I was like, looking at it, I was like, <laughs> what is happening? I, just, I think I just realized why the CAD spin chamber doesn't work. It's because the single atom has, because the single atom has to be a file. Mm -hmm. That has to be the, that has to be the same one, because Arm 1 grabs two fire atoms, essentially. Arm 8, I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh. it has to be salt fire for the CAD spin chamber to work. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. I see. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why it doesn't work. Alright. I'm glad I can well, get that it, out of my brain. <laughs> it's like... It's like three instructions. That would make it like 27. How does that compare to the... Other instructions? Anyway, yeah. Also? Anyway, yeah. P perfectionist moment. <laughs> but yeah. I guess... So one question is like... Congratulations on Kyler Races for ending their first win. Yeah. Very nice solve. Oh. I'm kind of curious oh, what P it is. It looks like an instruction solve. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Because, like, we have one through the track loop, two through the track loop, or to the instruction shape, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. <laughs> 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, <laughs> and 1 again. So it's 124th P, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, ignoring the output conditional stuff. All right, but yeah, congrats to <clears throat> everyone submitting for pig. Uh, this new and interesting metric, I guess. Um, and yeah, especially congrats to everyone who found uh, P four. Very impressive, all of you. Very well deserved top five positions. <laughs> yeah, those were in, that was incredible tech. All of that. That's two burpees for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had a bet on my cycles. This will be interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so let's, yeah, let's switch over to cycles and uh, load these up. Let's go. I have uh, no hopes for my cycles. <laughs> Time to sit there, back, relax. A lot of people kind of already know that <laughs> where they're sitting and on cycle. Time to sit back, relax, and watch the cycle soft <laughs> comes in while I get something like twenty fifth. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling good about my cycle. Twenty fifth is like, like but high hopes. I gotta, even. I gotta rank better than Biggie, or I gotta go get a big glob of peanut butter and eat it. <laughs> my bet was against Fiesta, who actually didn't for once do all that well, so I'm actually hopeful I won't lose my bet. Hmm. I mean, I don't know about this metric, though. Maybe mm -hmm. they did do good on this metric. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they'll probably just, like, kick ass on cycles instead of period and make me eat Dijonese, which <laughs> I don't want to do. <laughs> it's not that bad. What's the bond the bonder doing there? Oh, okay. It's a triangle track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is one from uh, 7T Storm. Um... Which I, I don't know why I'm showing it in cycles rather than pig, but uh, just like the title, it ain't much, but it's honest work. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think this is a pretty nice way to break this down, especially this left chamber. Um, next up, we have Chrysotep. Well, they were they were saying fast as in like fast for pig because keep in mind those are operating at half efficiency <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah so this one also has a pretty uh straightforward way of approaching it like the last one where it's debonding in the left chamber and passing these individual atoms to the right where it makes both of the outputs um And yeah, okay. I, I guess another thing I should point out is um, on the stream I'm showing the p the period for these two, so you can see like one p seventy five. Oh, oh, nice. That's a great addition. Yeah. One product per tape loop with a tape loop length of seventy five. Mm hmm. So, one so the big is... question, I guess, to start off with with cycles is: Do you debond in the main chamber or the small chamber? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think debonding in the small chamber has a certain cycles flaw, and I'm yeah. not convinced that floor is going to be low enough to compete with mm -hmm. debonding in the main chamber. Right, because you have to put everything through the conduit if you're debonding in the side chamber. Yeah, the like chamber. like there's like a con yeah, you're limited by the conduit basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this is the first 6P solve, which means it's scripted out, the instructions are scripted out all the way to the end, um, outputting six products. And yeah, actually, this, this is interesting. I think this is the first solve we've seen where everything except the Burlo is in the right chamber. 
So it's just the Brillo in the left chamber, and the atoms are passed to the Brillo um, as needed to be converted to various things. Hmm. Um, skipping over a couple pig solves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have quite the overlap now, don't we? <laughs> so I think, did we do this one? I don't think I've seen a new solution five. Redstone paradox? No, we haven't. We definitely haven't seen redstone paradox. So this is a 213 cycle solve. Debonding in the side chamber. <clears throat> So, yeah, I think for these side chamber solves, a lot of it is just how uh, fast can you get stuff off of the input. I mean, even for the other chamber, but especially if you're doing oh. it in the side chamber. Um, like how oh, fast apparently can you get we the have already there. seen the solve. Oh, I already started. We okay. have? Yeah, oh. I thought I did. <laughs> well, Redstone Paradox knows they're top 40 now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just get it, clearing this off as fast as you can so that it can spawn again, um, I think is one of the chief concerns for these that build it in the side. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I remember this being a pig. I've just like been remembering all the more impressive, <laughs> well not just, yeah, just better pig solves. So this one from Catspin is cycles optimized, instructions optimized, instructions optimized, cost optimized, cycles optimized, cycles optimized, first victory. So I think this is a cycles optimized version of this the. This is a different solve. Yeah. No, no, no. We, this is. It's not sixty nine instructions. It's slightly different. <laughs> it's it's a cycles yeah. optimized version. <laughs> it's not sixty nine instructions, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you can see what uh, Zorflax was talking about earlier, where it's grabbing the salt here, which lets it oh. do all the triplex. Because otherwise, yeah. you have to do a triplex um, between here, and you don't have enough space. Yeah, it saves latency because ARM3 is yeah outputting uh, right away yeah. instead of ARM3 waiting. ARM3 just goes burr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so next up we have Top of Mass at 187 cycles. <clears throat> nice. And <clears throat> yeah, this one has a pretty... Side chamber burlo. Yeah, another side chamber burlo. It's also a much quicker side chamber bellow. Yeah. It's interesting for cycles. I feel like you're, it would definitely limit you as, like, because you have to pass everything through here that you want to. I mean, I mean you maybe could you could save some salt. Like this one. But, uh... Yeah. Like here, everything except this one salt is passed through. If you have like duping in the right chamber, you can definitely just pass like it through, get a water and a fire, pass it back. Yeah, that's true. Only have to use it once. <clears throat> Make some um, uh, catalysts. Yeah. Which may be something we see. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Could be impressive with the space we have, but uh, since I feel like the right side could be used way more efficiently than just a burlo sitting there, not Maybe. the right side, the left side. <clears throat> so yeah, this one's from Please 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 Lol. Uh, just wanted to say it's great to see an active community for this game. I mostly lurk on the Discord, but it's definitely a cool place. Well, thanks. The community is awesome. Yeah. And yeah, this uh, debond is perhaps familiar from many of the pig souls. But done in a 1P way. It's 1P24. Oh. And some interesting handling with ARM9 here, passing the salt through ARM4 as it's moving. Alright, next up we have. 20P construct. I assume yeah. that's uh, P20. It's P21. Uh, P21, okay. I guess. <clears throat> it miscount. Oh, because there's a period override. Hmm. Well, period override doesn't even have to be there. Arm yeah. two, like, figure it out. Yeah. 
But yeah, this one is 132 cycles. And it is doing the side chamber deconstruction, though it's interesting to see this at this angle. I feel like that's somewhat novel. And yeah, it's making the two halves separately, so it's alternating where the atoms go. Um, we did see that in a pig solve. Or I think, a couple I, think I forgot my cycle score, let me look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell which uh, metric I put more. I mean, you, you... <laughs> just uh, uh, just make it a surprise. Just make it a surprise. <laughs> oh, it's me already. <laughs> <laughs> I already looked it up. Mm -hmm. The looking at past solution scores things is great. Also, lets me know if I accidentally forgot to submit something. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Matter Monkey. At sub two to the seventh, so here we start getting smaller drops. Uh, two to the seventh. That was a five cycle drop. Oh, <laughs> one twenty eight. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, usually my production cycle solves feel awful, but this one feels pretty good. I set my sights on having two arms work together to dupe <clears throat> all the atoms that are needed, and somehow managed to get the rest of the machine to keep up. Cycle nineteen has a very nice pair of pivots. Let's see. 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is like turning the wheel into a all the stuff you need for the two outputs and then breaking it apart. It seems like Matter Monkey worked on pick first. Mm hmm. Production got hands. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now we got a small hands. <laughs> Ten cycle drop. Ten cycles. Three P yeah. Azaz. This is three P, not P three. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Some cool track loops going on here. Or a cool track loop. Can just slide everything past the burlo. It's kind of a height ish. Ish tech. And yeah, deconstructing into twos here. Uh next up is me. I think this is the first host solve that I've actually submitted. Uh, you've submitted something before, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Wait, remember. you play your puzzles, Brian? <laughs> so. Damn. I can't, you don't, I can't believe you don't just leave everything to Haxton. <laughs> I mean, Haxton definitely does, uh, is very appreciated, but you try to make at least something, <laughs> even if it's not too optimized. This is, I guess, uh, lightly optimized. Lightly, <laughs> just ever so slightly. But yeah, this is definitely like the uh, side chamber. The main thing that's preventing this one from going faster is that this takes so much time to get it off this last piece off into the mm -hmm. conduit. I feel like side chamber input would like get you only so far. Right. Yeah. I just found it to be a easy way to think about it, just making three salt pairs and then dealing with it over here. Yeah. Uh, and then next up we have Andridge K. The same cycles, in fact. <laughs> nice. Apparently I am able to get the 25th I predicted. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I, I would hope. <laughs> But yeah, this one's using the main chamber input and keeping this <clears throat> bonded in the right pattern. And using here it's using the atom next to it as like a catalyst. Which is kind of a cool pattern. Because you don't need the burlo. You only need the burlo to make one of the atoms that, and then you can duplicate all Yeah, you only need one water, you can just uh, dupe it elsewhere later. Arm six could be length two. Yeah, that's true. It could be. 
Arm six, yeah. Let's get rid of these. Because, yeah, grabbing here is the same as grabbing there. So. Uh, would, uh, uh, 20 cost matter? Let's see. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah, next up yeah, we have one of the three cycles. Big drops. Uh, actually, I think I already showed this one. <laughs> But we Probably. might as well see it again because it <laughs> places. Stalls with better cycles. <laughs> <'Cause> it <laughs> place... Yeah, it places pretty well in cycles <laughs> though. Um, so I guess a well, well balanced solve. Yeah, it's one of the few metric pairs where you can have a solve that's kind of balanced between um, both metrics. Yeah, while still being significantly different. Mm -hmm. At the top level. Uh... I'm risking <laughs> ninety-seven. <laughs> It's another big drop. Maybe I will be getting my <laughs> 25th. <laughs> yeah, so this is a Erlo uh, suppression. Interesting. Oh yeah, because it is a very obvious place for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, the comment is, I felt I have some good ideas for both categories, but I can't make them work. This is my better than nothing solve. For this, I tried to keep mm -hmm. some fire items in the left chamber for non-rotating wheel, which is too hard to program, so I just gave it up. Uh, cabinet level is so frustrating that you can't make your idea work by sacrificing some metric, always hitting a wall. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally hitting a wall? Yeah. I do really like the Berlo suppression here, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it just fits very neatly in that little spot. And yeah, and I guess it's sending all of the... Oh yeah, it sends this fire pair with the air still attached so it can calcify it here, which it has space for. Burlo suppression looks like it could be useful later, says Rebix. Perhaps. Burlo suppression, yeah. I mean, it uh, got some rate issues to go with it, but uh, it definitely saves space. Mm -hmm. uh, next up we have a three cycle drop <clears throat> to Hello Jasper. This is a... What was Hello Jasper's... Uh... Pig rank? Pig placement. I don't remember. I don't think it was as good as 25th. <laughs> I guess everybody went for pig first. Well, a lot of people went for pig rather than cycles. Yeah, but Yeah, this is a much faster side chamber deconstruction. It helps that all the bonders and output are on the same side, so you don't have to like move things over the output. Yeah. Or the input, I mean. Uh, oh, that's a very familiar uh, input chamber <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> from the same person. <laughs> yeah, the water output delivery like snakes around for arm six and seven. And it's able to pretty cleanly get both of the atoms it needs all from the burlo. Uh, next up is, uh, well, yeah, it's 42 genius, 42 solve again, uh, the half P, uh, six solve, but we already saw that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it the one solve and we're, we're going to be skipping a lot of them. Yeah. Was... <laughs> I mean, I guess most people have that. Was, was this? P12. Was this one? Did I show this one? <laughs> Um, can't even tell what we've seen before or not. Any? Anyway. No, we haven't seen Tweedledee. Yeah, I, I think this. Well, I think we saw Tweedledee, but have we? I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe this is an older version of their solve. Yeah, like a cycle I optimized version. Tell. Yeah. But yeah, this is another uh, input in the side chamber, making groups of two, but not doing any calcification. And then we have this cool track that calcifies both of them. Yeah, I don't think we saw this one yet. Um, the limit for the side chamber is uh we're already kind of approaching the limit almost yeah input side chamber is uh, at best p9 mm. when it comes to speed and yeah p getting a low period is important for cabinet cycles or any cycles really mm -hmm. but especially cabinet um we got a one cycle drop to Tulare. Nice. 
uh, optimization. Just looks a lot like their, uh, <laughs> a lot like their pixel. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> similar similar categories. Uh, optimization of the arms on tracks allowed me to shave off a few cycles here and there. There's at least one more optimization that would save five more cycles, but any faster and the ring collides with the stabilized fire fragment before I can pass it through the yeah. conduit. Uh, this architecture started at 91 cycles, and I was pretty happy with that, so getting it down to 84 was gravely. But yeah, very nice uh, creation of this water output. And then not too much more work to make the other one. But yeah, the limiting factor is the ring colliding with stuff, I guess. And I think, I guess, yeah, this sort of breaks it down where it's calcifying the ring first and then duplicating onto it uh, and sort of separating out calcification, duplication, then debonding into three different steps means that latency is a little higher and it's harder to clear, clear out that space to get throughput higher. Uh, so next we have a four cycle drop to Cuckoo52. I feel like we have a... I feel like water main chamber is going to be a pretty common theme. Yeah, it seems like the best choice for low latency and then trying to get this one out as fast as you can despite yeah, having like to put input it through a and water in main chamber makes sense since a conduit only has to proc twice to get triplex through and the, all the you got a lot of space for debonding and you don't need that much space for the water since that's you can just keep a piece of three right and yeah pretty nice burlo layout it only has to rotate once nice uh Yeah, some more small drops, one cycle to a rational guy. If arm three swung any earlier, it would hit the molecule of arm two or five. The cool dodge of something at cycle 14 is not necessary. It can be avoided by having arm one retract, then pivot. That was my previous submission. That's a period 11 salt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and some more Burlo suppression here, so it's able to move this off and then back on. It is nice that Arm 1 does all the debonding without having to re-grab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's just one single motion. It's kind of sad that Arm 3 is like holding onto this for so long before it can output it. Because I, I guess if it, it is, yeah, swung swinging. earlier, it would run into this stuff over the conduit. Uh, next up, we have another one cycle drop to OMG It's Abyss. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Better Disassembly. Oh yeah, I had horrible disassembly in the left chamber before. Uh -huh. uh, this is also <laughs> limited by the fact that the three just the three atom thing can't get out of the way in time because they have to swing the air atom, well, one the salt atom over, and it's uh. Mm -hmm. I guess it's faster because I do the fire first and then the water. I guess I can't tell. Like, yeah, that generally I does. Happen make it faster because the fire takes more time. Yeah, it's just less latency for fire. Yeah. Also, Moraconda is calling me out in DMs. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been responding there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, now we have a four cycle drop. Zorflax. That sounds like me. Yeah, <laughs> all the commentator songs. <laughs> Uh, I can't out of the way. <laughs> um, comment is, I cannot believe I almost forgot to submit Lamau. Anyway, I'm praying that someone managed to get under 70 cycles. 70 cycles seems very much possible with where we are. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
my comment was aimed at with um, input in the left chamber. I see. Uh, yeah. At no point did I consider putting it in the main chamber, which I don't know why I didn't consider it. I think because I, I, I wanted to not spend that much time on cycles because throughout this tournament I've had a problem of hyper-focusing on one metric at the cost of another. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So on like Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to call it here on cycles and try and actually spend decent time on both metrics. And that just kind of backfired on me because I didn't, do pig anyway so mm -hmm. yeah i just ended up yeah <laughs> at a place where i kind of didn't put enough time in either metric mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of just one of them so yeah this is probably my biggest whiff of the tournament so far though it was i, d I just never even tried input in my channel get a good metric unlike the other weeks yeah i guess it was the same for yeah same for week one mm-hmm I guess it's the same for week one, but I just didn't really submit for week one. Yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. I do like this... though, that's really close to the limit of left chamber input. Mm. I like this arm 10 too, it's like swinging across just as the atoms coming out of the conduit. Yeah, I tried to get a 9... I, I tried to get a P9 left chamber, because the right chamber I'm pretty sure just straight up works P9, but mm -hmm. um... The problem was I couldn't get it to drop through the conduit once every three cycles. Because um, you can see there's a period override um, on my instruction tray. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's oh. a BP9. But it's just the stupid conduit because it drops like... It would be like a... It would drop... You have to drop to four, even three, two. every three cycles. Yeah. Mm. But I couldn't get it to drop every three. <clears throat> otherwise this would have been like a 69 or something, which would have been nice. Maybe somebody else would do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I have to say it, but it sounds like we're running out of, yeah, this isn't all, I'd call this near the floor for input in left chamber, yeah. which is why I was kind of overconfident mm. in my cycle salt. But it seems like I'll be eating Dijonais, which I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Every five cycles, huh? Mm. Yeah, this could be a few spoonfuls. <laughs> spoonfuls for every five. Mm. Fiesta is saying get your spoon ready. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Dijonais doesn't sound that bad. Probably because I like both it's, of those things, but uh. No, I, I hate it. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's foul. <laughs> well, next up we have Kevlarin with uh, another uh, left chamber deconstruction, but at one lower cycle. I see. Um, <laughs> it's still, just... still uh, period 10? Yeah, it's still P10. Uh, there's a note after optimization, several free hexes appear in the solution, hence the name. Decently fast peeling fits nicely in the small chamber, though it means the speed of the conduit limits the whole solution. Uh, the final swing of the electrolytic fluid was my favorite discovery in this puzzle, which I found while this was still in the 90 cycle range. I think the main chamber can have a 9 cycle period, but I can't seem to find a peeling method that can run the conduit at max rate. Seems uh, similar to your issues, Orflex. Yeah, I'm not convinced it's possible, actually. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this the, the way it leaves this salt here and then just swipes it in, very satisfying. Also, I very... feel like the main part of this puzzle in cycles is the disassembly. Yeah. Also, a very active burlo. <laughs> Only two cycles; it's not <laughs> moving. Mm, yeah, multi. Yeah, so like the disassembly was key for cycles, and that's why small chamber doesn't work because you need a, you, you need a, a lot you need room to disassemble quick, and that's the main limiting factor really. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have another one cycle drop, <clears throat> but Ooh. at one higher Moderate period. Just to... <laughs> huh. So oh, a lower so latency. Much latency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the only factor limiting this machine to 11R is water suppresses input too long. Maybe I can stick another triplex in the small chamber to save a regarb latency. Sending fire into the conduit hurts latency, but saving debonding work makes building this stuff quite less painful. Seems to be the common theme with P11. Mm. It's burglar though, yeah.
Yeah, nice Burlo on a track here. You can dodge out of the way. I'm surprised we're at 16th already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, coll <clears throat> collision with Burlo is another thing to worry about yeah. in uh, cycle solves. So yeah, next up we have a two cycle drop to John John. Production is hard. Production is Production hard. hard. <laughs> this we're back at P10. I feel like input in the small chamber isn't optimal, but it, this was the easiest way to solve it for me. I can't wait to be amazed by what other people can do. Yeah, I guess this one is just uh, somewhat lower latency than the other side input methods. It's cool that Impressive. Arm9... Yeah, much low latency, actually. Yeah. Not a lot of regrabs. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's just He's one definitely... regrab here. Yeah, another thing about input and left chamber is it, like... Uh, I know I was fooled into thinking it was fast because it just kind of all looks fast. Yeah, everything looks fast, but uh. Then you just realize it's a local minimum, and you're just kind of not at global minimum. Mm hmm. Conduits. <laughs> Conduits. And yeah, it's it, both outputs are dropped on the same cycle, which uh. Pretty oh, nice. nice. And next up. We have a four cycle drop to Starfish. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a main cycle input. This is eight. Yeah. Period eight. Period eight? Okay. It was dropped right down to period eight. <laughs> oh, we're at 66 already. What, when did that happen? <laughs> yeah, four, yeah damn. four cycles drop. Pretty significant at this point. And yeah, this one also drops both of the products on the same cycle. I'm scared. It seems like it's gonna. We've got a couple more drops ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> There's no metric points. <laughs> yeah, the fact that a period eight solve uh, is only 14th place. Uh, Definitely scary. Yeah. Um, let's see. All right, so now we got a primary tie from Neutral. Oh. This is a period nine, but we finally got a primary tie. <laughs> Period nine. Yeah, this is interesting because it's slower, but uh, it manages to completely deconstruct and calcify everything in just this like swing pivot pivot. Cool. Like swing pivot pivot, nice. you have a two, a three, and a one, uh, with everything but this one calcified. So it's pretty slick. It also makes it into two, one, and three. Right, yeah, yeah which is win. like kind of what you want for the right chamber. That's, I feel like that's more important than all calcifying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty elegant. And yeah, the Burlo uh, suppresses, but it it's just so the Burlo can move out of the way. Yeah. And make room for this very nice track up here that just lets it slide all the way to the output. <laughs> And what's, let's see, which one? So yeah, this one drops and then this one spends a few cycles getting output. So it's definitely, this one is the limiting latency here. Um, so yeah, now we have a one cycle drop to username void. Oh. And I actually want to show after this username voids uh, pig solve because it is slightly okay. different. Uh, the comment is, I spent far too long looking for a 64 and found one, which would have worked, but for BS Collision. Relatively happy with this still though, and uh, excited to see what beats this. Um, why is it 65 cycles but only 60? Oh wait, yeah, I can other arm start later. Never mind. Mm -hmm. How 
Uh, my name is Spoons of Mustard, uh, Dijonese. Do you have to eat now, Um, pro, we're approaching two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one actually outputs the easier molly or uh, output first, which potentially hurts latency here. Yeah. <clears throat> But it seems like with the way it's debonded, it's difficult to uh, not do that. Getting it out of the way would like is good for our right though. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, I also wanted to just show this one since I didn't get a chance to show it in pig because the cycles was low. Uh, this is using voids pig solve. Um, I see. Add a p nine. Uh, he says his best true pig is a 1075555 at one third p. Um, true pig meaning like a solution that's designed for pig. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, this one is just one p. So. Yeah. Let me. See. Yeah. Um, so the previous one was at 65, next one is at 63, with a period 8. Ooh, period 8. Love to see the lightning track. Mm -hmm. Already approaching top 10. <laughs> this metric is going way faster than the other one. <laughs> yeah, right, we're just kind of flying through these. <laughs> I mean, they're just kind of... They're just that, yeah? <laughs> Disassembly, put things in. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, yeah. I guess one thing to watch out for is when you duplicate, do you worry about it after debonding, or do you try and do it during debonding, like this one does? Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing it during debonding, I think you need to have a specific arrangement with the Burlo. And that's when collision with the burlo becomes a huge pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is another one that outputs the easier one first. Uh, yeah. So it's period. Yeah, eight, and it does it to improve light rate, but it costs latency. Right, because it's just it's right here. You get it's it out of the way. The mm -hmm. But you'd prefer to be outputting the. Red first rather than the blue. Mm -hmm. Or we'll processing the red first. Yeah, getting started on it first, at least. Alright, yeah, and we're actually moving into top 10. Top 10? Alright. At 60, Sputnik 4. Goodbye, Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's a the Sputnik coincidence is the more impressive one, because mm -hmm. you could have called it, like, Voyager or Cassini <laughs> or New Hero. No, no, they both went with Sputnik. <laughs> I think I this did Sputnik see a few solves satellite. called Voyager. Man -made satellite. <laughs> what? Yeah, is I get... Sputnik the first man -made satellite? Yeah. Or... Okay, yeah. I, I think... Yeah, I think it is. Voyager's, like, the most iconic pro, but Sputnik was the first one. Mm hmm Voyager isn't... I, it was, yeah. Hmm? Voyager's the furthest one now, right? Yeah, I, I guess I guess Sputnik isn't exactly a probe. I was going to say Voyager isn't a satellite, but then I remembered that we're not talking about satellites, so... <laughs> <laughs> so why did you both say Sputnik, no, then? It's not. it's not a probe. It just, it just orbits around and makes a beeping noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first it's one. It's a metal. We just <laughs> threw it in space, you know? <laughs> I got actually lol. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a very smooth debonding method, actually, mm -hmm. and it also does the do output the easy one first, and then deal with the tri triplex in the left chamber. Yeah. I mean, it does start like moving yeah. around the atoms that are headed towards that quite early. Yeah, it hands it off, but it does take a bit to get it. So it's actually outputted two of these by the time it gets one the of these. It's doing water about as late as possible, honestly. Uh -huh. Avoiding, like, having the input crash into it. Yeah, it's basically doing it last thing. Uh -huh. Just latency on the fire uh, on the fire product is uh, quite a bit. Yeah. 
which is, I guess, what's limiting. Oh, this is 6p. Right, What's yeah, the pseudo? 6p53. That's pseudo, right? Pseudo period? Uh, looks like 8. 8, okay. Yeah, it, yeah it'd, it'd be 8. All right, next up at the same cycle count, we have uh, Hexen's Tesla. Cool. Oh, it's a Tesla. Nice. Ooh, that's a nice state bonding. Mm hmm. And this one's just straight up period oh, yeah. eight. Yeah. This one's. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, let's see how it moves here. Output. So the latency difference isn't too bad for this one. There is a re-grab here. But pretty balanced latency, all things considered. And yeah, this is non-scoring. This is a playtest solve from Haxton. Yeah, that's a nice deep on sequence though. Mm-hmm. All right, next up we have uh, number nine, Sputnik Envy. Also Sputnik. <laughs> finally got, all right, finally we got under 60 <laughs> cycles. But that's, How many um, is that? oh, that's three. Oh. Three. <laughs> have fun. All right. I'll be back with my spoon. <laughs> I think I have to go get my own spoon soon. <laughs> oh, no. What did what bet did you make? That if if Biggie ranks better than me in both metrics, I'm gonna eat uh -huh. a big spoon of peanut butter. I see. And I think I'm gonna have to go get it. <laughs> Do you hate peanut butter or is it just like yeah, yeah. I want peanut butter? Yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's more like a like peanut butter's good, but like have you ever had to have you ever tried to have like a whole ton of peanut butter at once? Mm -hmm. I, I can. I have. I can do that. That's great. I personally don't really like peanut butter. <laughs> oh yeah, this one's using a catalyst. John, John, actually paying attention to the solution here. <laughs> <laughs> While we're all talking about spoons, John, John is actually looking at the solution. It does use a catalyst. Yeah, nice. it passes off one of the pairs here so that it can uh, doesn't have to ever duplicate fire after that. Um, Yep. But yeah, the, the note for this is, by my reckoning, using opposite sides of the Burla wheel is so infernally awkward that a permanent catalyst is the best way to go fast. What we lose in yeah. N, we more than regain in P and L. I couldn't quite get maximum conduit throughput, which would have required a six cycle inner loop, so I think this technique could get as low as 52, but nonetheless feel that this is a respectable effort. Yeah, it's definitely mm, an interesting technique. I'm, I'm liking the catalyst technique, actually. That makes a world of sense for not having to move your burly wheel around and worry about collisions. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is somehow a 7p solve. I guess uh, it has to clean up the catalyst, so there's like an extra uh, output that uh, happens after that. I guess it's after it solves, so it just right, it yeah. loops. Yeah. That's the reason the instructions, uh, instructions tertiary isn't there. Right, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I think it's, I don't know, I think uh, you don't really need tertiaries, like there's not too many. I don't think there's been any ties so far. Uh -huh. But there yeah. There hasn't been any ties yet. Mm -hmm. Next up at the same primary, indeed, it is Mr. Puzzle. Yep. Gee, <laughs> could it be a 58 <laughs> cycle solution with a catalyst and uh, pseudo period 7? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> nice. N <laughs> That's a smaller catalyst. Yeah. Also, it's like half because this arm seven is holding onto the other part and for safekeeping. <laughs> oh, little turtle. <laughs> <laughs> little turtle cuck, tucked away. <laughs> oh, it puts it back. But yeah. Okay, this is my salt now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess the note is having the input burlo and water output in the same chamber seems really powerful since you can quickly create create and drop the water output, getting those atoms out of the way. I'll be pleasantly surprised if faster solves assign the inputs slash output slash burlo to cabinets in a different way. And yeah, this one's doing the one, two, three, uh, right? Wait, 
Okay, no, it's resetting now. But yeah, it's getting one, two, three. One, two, three seems to be the way to go. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Next up, another secondary drop. Wow. <laughs> Rebix with uh, washer dryer. Check out arm nine. Thanks. <laughs> Check out what words we start playing. Ah! <laughs> washer dryer. Huge dryer. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I like how arm six and seven are only doing pivots. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I would I'm say those are nine... arms, but uh, secondaries mattered here. Mm hmm. I like the <clears throat> I like the triplex um, bonding on this one because one thing that most of the triplex chambers have had to this point are like unfortunate regrabs, and yeah. it's been the triplex um, output that's been like the latency like problem child. So <laughs> to see like a, a a method that does not do any unnecessary regrabs is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, there's this like regrab to pivot, but it's aligned with the latency that this takes anyway, so there's not really any loss. Yeah, let's see. But, uh. Yeah. Yeah, for a period 8 solve, the latency uh, is quite low. Oh, and also it's not 6p. Yeah, it's just one P. Unsingular singular P. <laughs> I assume this is P7. Mm-hmm. One P7 from uh, Bambi. Bambi. Nice. Watch as we see P6 solves in cycles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Ooh, one... Arm 9 is basically doing the same thing as Revix. Yeah. Except it's a smaller one. Yeah, actually, this the left chamber here is pretty much exactly the same as uh, the last solve, where it does a pivot here, um, and then a regrab to move it here, and then. Uh -huh. mm, functionally, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe the calcification happens in, versus the duplication at a different point, but it's uh, very similar. And yeah, interestingly, this, the last, the like previous uh, fuel drops at the same time as the upcoming. Ooh. <laughs> uh, oh, the previous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was number six. Another one cycle drop. Damn. More conda. <clears throat> So the comment here is, I'm about 75% sure 6R is impossible, which makes 7R the new target. The 6P one cycle save is fairly self-explanatory, um, and just so happens to work out perfectly that both final products get output on cycle 56 exactly. Latency is decent, but you could possibly save up to three more cycles to the conduit, I think. This could be beaten by a lot more than three cycles by a solve that builds the fire outputs uh, in the main chamber, but I don't didn't know how to even begin trying to do that reasonably fast. If someone manages that or finds 6R to finish in about 50 cycles, I will be amazed. This solve probably isn't winning, but I think it's close. Yeah, this the, is a good week for Mara. Yeah, She's good at uh, production. <laughs> 1P could possibly sneak into top 20? Yeah, probably. I think top 20 was like... Uh, or wait, what is this 7R? Maybe not, I don't know, I don't remember. Uh, I think it's 7R. Yeah, she sort of mentioned how this isn't 6R. Right, so, so, so it, it would be a, a P7. Oh, that would be the pseudo period. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of side by side with Mark. I was kind of side by side with Mara Connor for a few weeks, but she's just going to jump way ahead of me now in points. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I see, yeah, so for the last output, arm 5 helps out getting the uh, fire output out faster, and then finishes well, up the last see, one. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting that this one focuses a lot of effort on getting the calcification out of the way before debonding. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Even though you still need a calc... It's, it's kind of surprising... In the last it's kind of surprising how much of a... It's kind of surprising how much of a pain in the ass calcification is. I think it was Mark Honda who was like, yeah, I think I hated a new glyph this week, and it was calcification, because <laughs> it's a surprisingly tricky problem in this puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thanks, Panic, for giving us an input where none of the outputs use. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Wait. You wow, I didn't two... even know I could hate this. <laughs> you built two probe modules. The first one makes hexa stabilized salt. <laughs> yeah. That, that thing is even faster. If this thing's at 56 cycles, that thing's about 100. <laughs> yeah, that's like the space chem uh, approach with reactors or whatever. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so going down to fourth place at the same cycles, uh, Calioresis. Oh. Oh. This is 8R6P. 8 R oh. 6 P. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's like, yeah. it's six P, not, not P six. With a pseudo rate of yeah. I, I feel like maybe we should consider putting oh, R at right, the beginning too, because R eight and P eight are kind of like you know R and P are similar in that way. So calling a solve yeah. R eight instead of eight R might make sense. Because yeah. then you can just replace the R with P sometimes, and it's makes yeah, it's sense. only an extra stroke. Yeah. <laughs> if you're capitalizing it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, comment is cycles is just. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cycles is just pig but faster. I'm predicting min rate is 6R based on what others have said throughout the week. Seems like it. I'm not sure anymore. I mean, we're already in, we're already in top five. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We still have Biggie. <laughs> yeah, Biggie, Biggie has entered sicko mode. <laughs> so let's see, Biggie, Pentapig, Spiritual Shampoo. Oh yeah, that. Calioresis. Oh, no, this is Calioresis, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, oh duh. Dude, <laughs> oh, my bad. So those three. So what does this do on the last cycle? Nothing particularly different, I guess. I have I have faith in sub fifty. <laughs> Same people in top four. This is it's a really good cool. week for the top competitors. Yeah. It's just I've got to be a bit of shuffling around in the top four and Biggie gaining a lot of places. I see. So on the last output, Arm Three is pivoting itself instead of handing off to Arm Four, so it saves a little bit uh, of time in there. Makes sense. Yeah, last cycle, Arm Three pivots instead of Arm. Makes sense. Alright, so we've been at 56 cycles for a bit. Now we're going to drop six cycles. There's the 50. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Period six. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is 2p12 for a, a rate of six. Nice. Actually, well, yeah, that solves oh, the rank conundrum anyway. Because if you use the P terminology as in, like, the full P terminology where you put both numbers around, then you can just kind of calculate R based right, on yeah. what the P yeah. numbers are. Exactly. I was talking about that. Like, if you don't, like, do conditionals to where, like, you start doing the second product later by a delayed start, uh, the number after P divided by... The number before P is your rate. Mm -hmm. uh, period is the length of the tape here. So here the period is 12, because uh, you have 12 uh, instructions max for all the arms. It's the Berlo wheel here that I like, that it's doing a lot to make sure it's duplicating properly and not being a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, we got the extra duplication going on in this chamber. Does 
Does the Burlo actually need to be on track? Like, instead of just rotating an extra time? I think it's dodging, uh... Yeah, um, yeah cause... What? No, wait, sorry. Um, um, um... <laughs> yeah, cause it needs to duplicate on that far right one, and it also oh. needs to make room for arm two. Because if it rotated another well, time, I mean, this if air... If it just sits on the right, that... Right, yeah, have it have it just sit on the right and rotate extra. What so. will happen is this air will be over this... Um... Oh, well... Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah it, would, it would duplicate back to an air. Well, then you... Can you... Oh... See how the air the, goes here? Can you That's duplicate the, the right one as water first? Uh... Not sure. That would require a lot more tweaking. I think this one has to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, that would be not that six. Would... That would make it seven. Ah. Uh, because you have to. You no, can't. Yeah, yeah, I think it messes. The, it messes with the period. I yeah. think it messes with the period. Yeah. Trying to fix that it's, problem. It's you're either going to get this extra air on there, or you have to delay once to like make things line up. That's a lot more tweaking than I assume Spiritual Shampoo has already done. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> this is the number three so solve. Yeah, cause, <laughs> yeah, you don't instantly think about putting the bell on the track. You're probably like, okay, I need to put the bell on the track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, this is a very clean way of getting the one, two, three as well. It's like all one atom here, and then this pivot on arm four. Now it's three, two, one. Because it has these two mm. devonders here. And it can yeah. pull that off, nice. pull that off. And then this track uh, is able to operate at uh, period six. I'm impressed by how neat everything fits together. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a very tidy use of the, the yep. space given in the large chamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason it has to be period 12 is because of the track loop. It's only reason. Yeah, just the singular track loop. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this would be a, also an impressive period six off. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's 98 instead. Well, 98 is because it's doubled. It's only 40 something. Right. But yeah. The period six can work. Period six can work. And there's two more to go. Mm hmm. All right. Is it is it Biggie or is it Pentapig? Is it is it Biggie or Piggy? Come on. <laughs> Biggie or Piggy. Uh, three cycle drop. <laughs> that sounds like a Biggie name. It's Pentapig. It's a pe oh okay. Biggie wins. Nice. So yeah, there's this very nice uh, just deconstruction method. Oh, I think this is period six. <laughs> yeah, this is just straight up period six. This <laughs> beats some period six solves. <laughs> wow, I like the back and forth kind of swinging debunding this one does. Mm-hmm. I had a goal, where uh, a personal goal, where I wouldn't want to see my period in cycles. Uh, well, <laughs> 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 we didn't see cycles first, but that was what Panic was originally saying. But <laughs> yeah, it's when you start to get these really low period solves and cycles, it's like probably want to do. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a tricky thing, and uh, it's definitely something. That we thought about ahead of time, like doing cycles and pig in the same week, but yeah, I thought pig was a cool idea, and I just like cycles in the cabinet, so why not? Mm -hmm. It's better than pig and instructions. Yeah, I think the alternative would be like pig and sum or something, but maybe that's a little Your too weird. Your bike takes a production sum. Yeah. But yeah, the way that this is able to output uh, this half so cleanly, it just like debond, debond, and then it pulls back to get the second calcification, swings over, pivot, retract. Super clean. Yeah. Every hex has an important use in the large chamber. Yeah, it's, it's a sea of glyphs. <laughs> like, there is not a single wasted hex mm -hmm. or like optional hex. Like it all needs to be right where it is. Right. I particularly like the way arms three and four fit together with this swing that arm three does across arm four, and mm -hmm. for arm four to be able to access that heck that atom that it needs to pivot the whole thing properly. Right. And also in a way that it just gets its own corner, um, so that the input can just swing around doing its own thing. 
Right. Not to mention the clutch calcification that kind of makes it fits in perfectly against the burlo wheel. Right. Yeah. Like this this needs to be calcified and there it can be calcified <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and it just kind of doesn't calcify too much um, with, with regards to the fire. It just kind of worries about calcification later, which I also like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, place calcification everywhere. It'll, it'll probably calcify everything. <laughs> right. It does mean, I think, Pentapig loses latency on the triplex mm. chamber. Mm -hmm. well... Which might be where Biggie gets him. Maybe. It may be, just maybe. Yeah, it's another one where it's manages to output two of these before it's able to output one of these. But oh, getting this out yeah, of the way is very annoying. nice because, especially in a uh, period six, especially when it's overlapping the input. Right. But yeah. Uh, congrats, Pentapig, on second place. And now, at the same cycles, it's just a cost at save. At the same cycles, just yeah. a cost oh, save. No. Yeah, at forty-two. <laughs> What's the difference? Oh, wait, it's, it's an almost identical large chamber. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's mirrored. <laughs> oh it's my god, <laughs> they're, they're nearly identical. Yeah, it does the same uh, decomposition here. Uh, it's able to swing instead of the pivot that the other one is doing. Um, oh. <laughs> and it puts the calcifier on this side and the duplication on this side. It's just mirrored. It's like, mirrored, arms two yeah. and three are the same, just mirrored. Um, yeah, arms two and three are literally just mirrors of mm -hmm. Penapigs. <laughs> Is the bond layout the same? It seems so. Uh, it's slightly different. Slightly different, okay. Yeah, Biggie's actual debonding is slightly different, which is what lets him get away with less pistons. Or well, one less piston. Yeah, well, and also this whole side chamber doesn't have any pistons in it at all. Oh yeah, that too. That's side true as well, too. yeah. Well... Damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. But yeah, uh, comment. Uh, after all that, to have the top two souls be practically identical is pretty nuts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that you can do this in period six is just kind of wild. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the comment is if you can get this solved any faster, you're crazy. I had some doubt whether period six at 1p would work, but after a couple hours, it did. And with what I feel is min practical latency. Then Apparently so. Yeah. yeah. With all these people working on it, seems like it. Grimmy reckons there's a latency that can be shaved in the left chamber. Um, it'll be difficult because it it'll be harder than oh, this what we've normally seen because you have to calcify in the left chamber this yeah. time, which makes it harder to avoid the regrab. But maybe there's a way because we have seen a lot of cool triplex chambers, so maybe there are a couple of ideas there that can be used. But I think, yeah, it, it'd be a difficult challenge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, the difference in cost is 530 to 455, so it's quite significant. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of cost shaving. Oh, that's more than I thought. Huh. Yeah, I mean, let's here, let's load up the other one too. So yeah, here we have... Oh, you got three pistons in the left chamber. Yeah, so we have three pistons, three arms, and then three pistons, one arm. And this is two pistons, two pistons three pistons arms, and, no pistons. and yeah, no pistons. Uh, Put a bunch of track. Yeah, but the track doesn't make up for the fact that there's pistons there. Yeah, it's uh, quite the bit of shapes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the fact that this is possible in uh, period six is really cool. And congrats to Biggie on first place. Repeat winner, actually. Easy repeat to forget, but repeat, repeat winner. Pentapig. Yeah. Pentapig has been a repeat winner before this. Yeah, it'll I be interesting to see, winners too. see how the rankings change. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see that after the showcases when Panic sends me the <laughs> <laughs> CSV. Yeah. All right, showcase yes. time. Showcase time. All right. I guess that means I have to get started on the Dijon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 47 cycles um, was the... Hmm? 
47 cycles Can was the sure lower limit. Oh. What's up? Can we make sure we get all of the old pig uh, showcases shown at the same time? Yes. It sounds like there's at least one. Who, kind who of has cool. one? Grimmy has one? I've got one. You have I one. assume they're all named Opig, I hope. Uh, Mr. Puzzles is named Glorious 2P4R, I think. Is that the right one? Oh, okay. Yep, uh, yep. that's the Opig one. I think there's just two, you and Grimmy, unless somebody else has one. Okay. Yeah, and they're... Okay, I thought I saw someone else. They're... They should be consecutive. There's one solve between them, but it's a solve that Biggie made that uh, is like not necessary to to show. Hmm. So yeah, let's load that up now. Uh, this Glorious used to be six R with much worse latency, but I use quantum and self intersecting track to speed it up. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> more than overlap. <laughs> So, Two. any uh, explanation on <laughs> <Yeah>. this? <laughs> um. Okay, so, first off, I will mention that, yeah, it started off as a solve that has no um, self-intersecting track, and it had no quantum track. So, you can get 2P with simple, normal overlap, but I used um, modified... Uh, tracks to speed stuff up. Mm -hmm. So, as for how this is actually working, um, when the input spawns in, it immediately calcifies everything, and the two water, So, and then there's three atoms that turn into water. I just noticed and there's that the a input bunch of is not even in the... <laughs> yeah, so the, the water output is completely made and then outputted in the same half cycle before movement happens, so there's no collision to check. So mm -hmm. you can just have that in the wall. Um, yeah, I noticed. It's like, hi, <laughs> I exist in the wall. <laughs> yep. Uh, then, um, the the fire being held by four is what uh, catalyzes the that gets me a fire into the left chamber, and then there's extra duplicators in the left chamber that gets the other atom turned into fire. Mm -hmm. And then you just overlap a shit ton of glyphs and call it a day. <laughs> nice. But yeah, the fabled 2P. The fabled 2P. Is it, uh, like, is it possible to make this output in this chamber as well? Did you look at that at all? Or? Um, oh, to make, make both outputs in the same chamber? Yeah, would that make it 2P? any faster? Or? Um... Cause there might be some like double consume stuff. I didn't look into it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the tricky thing would be you're limited with your geometry when you're at 2p because, oh, yeah, yeah, because it has have, to be 2p. You yeah. have to wand, that is your only option. Mm -hmm. Because in order, in order to move atoms around, you need to grab and then you move them, mm -hmm. and yeah. now you are stuck holding that atom forever, right. So you either pivot in place, or you translate something around all day, or you rotate your atom in a circle. Mm -hmm. I see. That makes sense. All right, let's see what Grimmy's got cooking here. Two instructions. <laughs> Can you smell what the Grimmy's cooking? <laughs> oh, so it's a, uh, a track loop. Cut up for that track. Oh, well, there you go. Yes, you can do it in one chamber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Grimmy, my uh, my solve would not be considered OPIG or OPC because I'm using quantum and intersecting track. And yeah, it's more than I, just overlap. Right. I can convert it back to normal overlap solve, but I do not recall off the top of my head what the cycles would be. It, it may be faster, though, because it would be... It would be uh, R6. Mm. Yeah, it's this... not illegal, it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this track is here, yeah, because it initializes. So when you have a track like this, it always follows the bottom one if they're overlapped. Yeah. So uh, yep. you can Overlap have the arms start here and then it goes onto the track and it just keeps going around.
Neat. It's a three long track. Oh, right. It starts from the... Yeah, up here. It starts grabbing the input, yeah. Oh, man. Who are you people saying Dijonese isn't that bad? <laughs> I like mustard. I like mayonnaise. It's like... <laughs> it's like... It's not spicy, but it burns in a different way. Is it sort of like wasabi? That's what I would guess. Yeah, sure. but... I, d yeah, but it's like it sucks more than wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Spoonful Dijonese is Dijon mustard and mayonnaise. Yep. Next up, we have free range pig. Look up. Free range <laughs> pig. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, free space instructions. Hey, it's a three eye puzzle. It's actually a pretty decently easy three eye puzzle. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. don't even need like a multi arm or anything. In space. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool uh, vibes out here. It's just the plain black background. <laughs> yeah, mm. except I don't think this would be that easy to. Oh, I guess you can do that in another puzzle and like just copy paste everything in with offset like coordinates yeah yep ah uh, yes i think elephant I think mode <laughs> the first like two seconds of the dejeuner is the worst part because the way it just hits your tongue like oh i would be licking eating... like a... what <laughs> I'd probably be licking it like a lollipop and not a whole spoonful at once. Well, yeah, yeah. I was... The challenge was a spoonful anyway. I'm on my final spoonful. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, wait. I got my burp Yo Yoshi, what are you anyway. talking about exactly? What do you mean this? The way you get this oh, stuff outside um, yeah, is there's, by... There's... You can I edit wait it. Until his response, because there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you might be asking about. Yeah. Uh, I think it's outside the chambers. If that's the case, it's uh, solution editing, external yeah. solution editing. Because it only solution checks editing is the collision. easiest way to do it. You can also do the overlap trick where you can treat that space as there's a bunch of parts that prevent you from placement. It takes forever yeah. to like to swing stuff out there. Yeah. But like getting that entire track shape is impossible unless you use Mr. Puzzles mod. Yeah, it yeah. would, oh, it would be yeah, very annoying. Yeah, that. Oh, the track is too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the track is too big to fit in the chamber, so you can't do this mm -hmm. unless yeah. you use the track joining thing. Mr. Actually, Puzzle. would you just use? Could you just use merge tool? Uh, the merge conduits tool is be probably weird. the simplest way to do it. I yeah. am. You just build it out there like normal and then merge it with this puzzle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you do this, if you make a free space version of the puzzle and then build this in it, then you can use merge yeah. tool to merge it with an empty version of this and just put it up here. Also, I think this is a good time to show off that uh, Mr. Puzzle is a track joining and disjoining mod. How does that work? You press G. Uh, uh, yeah, cover over G is back, the key. G, well, uh, shift G. Oh, that Shift G it. to delete or cut, yeah. and then normal G to reverse or... You hover over it, press Shift G, and drag to another track. Uh, I'm holding Shift G. You hover over a you, track. You have to, you have to yeah, hold, put the cursor over a track, mm -hmm. and press then Shift. And Shift. push G. Just G? Uh, Shift G because Shift -G. they're all one thing. Uh, G is join. Yeah. Shift G is disjoin. So you press Shift G I'm doing and that. you. And then the orange. Oh, the orange yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It stopped working. And then you drag to a different track. You hold Shift yeah. G and. Drag oh, so you have track. to press G and then press Shift? Uh, oh, no, there we go. It and... should It should work the other way, but. I see. Yeah, and you drag yeah. to another track to disjoin it. I do want to make a. Like a video tutorial at some point but that'll that'll probably be once i get the feature set more finalized i think it might not work because it's like up there though it no it Maybe. should work it seems to you, just select it you have to just really you want, yeah really release that the point. g yeah oh yeah. okay there you go 
<clears throat> I see, I see. That makes sense. And like you can do the opposite, where you don't press shift and join them. Aha. Okay, That's cool. That's super useful for yeah. like eye solution. Yeah, because then you, you, like, yeah, you can edit the middle of a track. You make a snip here, you make a snip there, take out the bad part, put in a new part, mm -hmm. stitch it back together. Nice. Or make quantum track by just deleting pieces. Yeah. <laughs> You can also just make quantum track, but I haven't experimented with that. But maybe you'll only be using the quality of life features of uh, Fire. This setup is getting close to usable. <laughs> Flim dim <-stifer. laughs> Next up, another one by uh, Mr. Puzzle. <laughs> you guys had conduits? You guys had conduits. <laughs> the conduits here? Yeah, where, where are the conduits? Where'd they go? I deleted them. <laughs> All right, another... you can do that. <laughs> Another fits fits a goo feature. You can create and delete conduits at will. So I just deleted them. Nice. Did the meme. <laughs> they would have fit under Burr though, anyways. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, they could have, but yeah, this is fancier. It's funnier without him. Yeah. But yeah, the one chamber solve is possible. I'm wondering, does Owen Sim simulate the cabinet walls? Uh, not really. It it marks them as having area, but it doesn't do collision with them. It's wouldn't be too hard yeah. to add it. I just haven't. So technically, you can submit a free space like a free space puzzle with the exact same name. Oh yeah, well that actually detecting stuff outside the cabinet entirely, I not sure would would be a little bit more work. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have an instruction showcase from Haxton. This 36. is 36. Oh, somebody beat this. Yeah, so. <laughs> Wasn't there rational guys 21? Yeah. I think so, yeah. <laughs> that might still be the mock debate <laughs> as these get put on the leaderboard eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. This was 42 Genius 42's first working solve. Nice. Uh, main problem was how to I'll break up the for input. The victory screen. Yeah. It's the the stake in the ground solve, as I'm hearing it called these mm. days. Last still gets three to four points, right? Per metric. <laughs> yeah. And there's two of them. Mm hmm. The whole stake in the ground concept is something that's still completely foreign to me because I don't know why my <laughs> I just go straight to optimizing. Yeah. But yeah, it is honestly a good idea, and if you can do it, I would recommend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another one chamber solve. Does the How one two three break cost be? Probably not all two paint. Because I think everything is necessary. Dupe, triplex, calcifier, debonder, maybe a bonder, but you'd try to get rid of that. I don't think yeah. you need a bonder. I think the question is whether you want to have track or not. Yeah, it's the track or arms issue. But, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing a, like straight away, like, there's no glyph that forces track, which kind of scares me. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think well, yeah, cost, it is a little probably, bit dubious. Yeah, yeah, because you can do partial access triplex. You definitely don't need full access debonder. Uh, you probably don't need full access bonder. You probably don't need you don't even access need a bonder. at all on your triplex bonder. You don't even need a bonder. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a bonder. Oh, you don't need a bonder. No, you don't need a bonder. Oh. Yeah. Maybe that helps, actually. One less glyph to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a speed solve from username void. Ah, I see. Very nice. Uh, one six p or no, not. It's actually scripted all the way out, but it has a very regular pattern. Uh huh. I do have a soft spot for production cost because it's not always interesting, but when it is interesting, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only recently discovered the Halo Jasper work on Ether Reactor cost. Which is all waste in a single chamber. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive, honestly. Hey, here's a production sum playtest. 
Oh. Oh, it's a play test. Yeah. Nice. You know what, Pig and Sum probably would have been like decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cycles yeah. samey once he got to the top. One day there'll be a production sum puzzle. Today's <laughs> and, not that day. Yeah, it did almost happen. It did? Well no, I mean Haxton was, was uh Yeah, this is the playtest off <laughs> by Haxton. Yeah. <laughs> Haxton was like Pig and Cycles are too similar. I was like, yeah. I, I like cycles though. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, maybe some. Oh, I think cycles are too similar. Yeah, I thought you meant like some and pig is too similar. Yeah. I do think pig was an inspired choice of metric. Mm. It's for this puzzle. A, so I, I think pig is a good fit for, um, com, for cabinet in general. Yeah. I I might even like it better than instructions. Mm. I personally like it better than instructions. Yeah, one aspect it, of it that I liked was that it allows for big drops, like kind of like TI, where you have, like you know, seven, six, five, four, like that kind of thing. Yeah, like primary. Like yeah, yeah. Separations. Mm -hmm. I think pig feels a bit less esoteric to me than production instructions. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a fair point because it's way easier to tell. Like, there's, it's way easier to see. Oh, you know, if it weren't for this damn arm. I could lose a period point. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot clearer to see where you can optimize next. Right, it directs your focus very specifically. I could lose a period point. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, yeah, with instructions, it can be like, oh, you conditionaled this, but if you conditional that instead, it says instructions because reasons. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this one is minus three, but uh, but this is plus two, but it's minus three. Yeah. That's one <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never really <laughs> understood cabinet instructions. It's kind of like sum four in a way, where it's just like kind of yeah, perplexing. It's kind of like more like sum and sum four, honestly. Yeah. This method is better because of the way it is. <laughs> Neat. Um. Here's a cost solve. Using a piston. The cost except it has a piston. Uh, slightly cheaper may be possible, but this is pretty good. No, no, no bother needed. Right. So yeah, this is kind of demonstrating the min glyphs, uh, where you have half access, uh, pretty much everything. Like, there's nothing that this arm has full access to. Oh, it's a piston. Uh, uh, yeah. You don't really need full access to like anything. Mm -hmm. Nah, you don't. You just need like one hex of access for the product, for the region, two for the products, um, one for the debonder. Mm -hmm. Maybe two for the debonder if you need it, but then you don't really need access to anything else. You need access to the triplex because like at least a single access to the triplex because you're going to have a single atom. Mm -hmm. uh, that is true. You need, yeah, you do need one hex of access to the triplex. But yeah, here we have a 120 cost showcase oh. with a track from Haxton. Uh, comment is, cost and sum what was on the table that? after Panic changed ICG into pig because I'll never say no to a new metric. To attorney, I made these two playtest solves. Someday, maybe. Yeah. Someday, maybe. Yeah. I consider cost for Aether Reactor, but uh, waste management just seems like a pain. Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed that this, because I, I, I thought this wouldn't be the, because this seemed like a decent, because I can be good at production, but... Yeah, I was expecting this to be one of the production puzzles I'm good at, because Hex Stabilized Salt is the only production puzzle I have a record in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm really disappointed that of all the... Yeah, so this is the one I whiffed hard on, and yeah, I'm like kicking myself a bit. Yeah, I mean, I feel like for this puzzle, just seeing how people submitted over the course of the week and improved their solves and stuff, it was a lot less about being good at it. Like, most of the top solvers didn't have... get their solve, like 
right away. And like, I know that Biggie was at um, uh, P6 for a really long time and trying and trying and trying to get P4. And it wasn't until he got a P5 that he was able to see the way that you could get to a P4. So I feel like it's less about being good at it necessarily and more just like grinding it out, at least for this this week. It was kind of like that. Yeah, if I saw my if I saw the P five, I might have gotten a P four. Mm -hmm. But then again, Mister Fuzzle got stuck on that that spot as well, so maybe the not. same place. <laughs> yeah, 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 same and, place, but a period lower. <laughs> yeah, and the and well, and the thing is, is I went and I quick checked to see if I used Wichapish's left chamber, and yeah, it would be four. It'd be period four, and I think it was down to forty six instructions. Oh, even better. Mm -hmm. We got it to, down to like uh, 48. It's in the Opus Magnum chat. Mm. I didn't. I didn't experiment hard enough because I kept every every attempt I made for a left chamber kept winding up looking like the same thing. Apparently, you have a cost competition. <laughs> that, that pivot arm, man. So yeah, good. we got another uh, one. I come up with some. Or I mean, 120. Whack ideas for the left chamber, and I'm. Some of them were really close, and none of them worked. And I was really sad, because it felt a bit chaos -y, And I really wanted to have something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the tricky thing with a single arm is just uh, deconstructing the input. Or like, with, a, with no track, I mean. Yeah, maybe, because I think you have one spare access point, so maybe full access debonder is the play. So that makes it a bit easier. Yeah. But then you need, like, more stuff to be full access, maybe, if you want to, like, create... Because the thing is, if you're, if you're not using a bonder, you have to be careful about how you debond things. So I don't know. Uh, that is true. You kind of have to, like, not debond them sequentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You can't just debond everything into single atoms. Yeah, you can't just do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting for cost. I'm not sure it's interesting in a tourney context, just because it's like... Yeah. Maybe a weekly. Can, can you get rid of the track or not kind of thing. But yeah, and Definitely I think... interesting in like an academic sense, though. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe it'll be fun to optimize uh, when it ends up on the leaderboard bot or whatever. But yeah, um, that is the last showcase solve. So I guess nobody managed to do it without the track. Cool. Yeah. Open question. Yeah, it was sorted by cost, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still having it sorted by cost. I did update it so it showed instructions, though, instead of area. Yeah, it, like, it's GCI, just whatever's listed on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so that was the week five puzzle. And... Nice. Thanks to everyone who submitted. I guess I'll... Production is pain, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got through it. Still a decent puzzle. <laughs> Pig was fun. Pig mm -hmm. was a good choice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess I'll just show the, off this puzzle. So I sort of, uh, on a whim, decided to make this... How long this, did it take uh, you to make this puzzle? <laughs> um, it was about a day, I think. About a day. Went through a couple revisions. The original one had one fewer gold on it, but I didn't like how you had to do, do pre-building, so... Um, oh, oof. I yeah. just made it with three gold. And I was just... Yeah, my, my the goal Invisible this... Link... Yeah. The Invisible gold... Link vibes are strong with this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, that's my, obviously the um, inspiration. I wanted to kind of make... Optimize for f being fun to solve and looking cool when you solve uh -huh. it. So... Really low latency right, requirements, so uh, the symmetry, everything in a nice ring shape that's pretty easy to make, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you're looking for something to do, this isn't uh, going to affect the it's tournament not, score at all, but it is on yeah. the website. Um, I'm probably We're not, not going to have a stream Yeah, it. I'm probably not going to have a stream for it um, unless there's like tons of demand for some reason. But it seems like, because also you can post submissions in the Discord if you want. So most tourney cool. puzzles, you can't talk to each other, but this one, Feel free to share. So, if you're looking for something to do um, before the uh, next puzzle comes out, for the pain train, <laughs> uh, will there be a stream for the off week? Yeah, probably not. There's there probably won't be a stream. 
and yeah i think that's uh just about wraps her up uh, i'm looking forward to week six it's back to be a it's good to be back in infinite space <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think uh, week six is a fun puzzle i hope you guys like it um you did mention that week six was the first puzzle you made i think yeah yeah although it was an earlier revision of it um Mm-hmm. Good boy. Uh, Looking forward. To that. Yeah. But yeah. So um, first puzzles are mostly good. What what puzzles? First, like the first puzzles that are made for twenty are usually pretty good puzzles. Oh yeah, there's definitely a uh, a, th- a thing like a gimmick that it has. Uh, you'll see. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I think Brookie's first puzzle was Ravari's Rage, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Makes sense. But yeah, uh, thanks everyone for joining me. Thanks, uh, Mr. Puzzle, Bist, and Zorflax for joining me on comms. And uh, yeah. see you next mm-hmm. time. Yes. Thanks for hosting. Yeah. See you guys next time. See you guys next next week. Mm-hmm. Not just next week. Yeah, no stream. Time. No stream next week. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the break. Yep. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Mm, I've been looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See?